Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with amazing physical powers far beyond those of mortal men, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, wages a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Today, Superman begins one of his most dangerous adventures as, in his guise of Clark Kent, he receives an alarming midnight phone call. Uh, uh, all right, all right. Hello. Hello, Clark. Yeah? This is Bruce. Who? Bruce Wayne, Batman. Oh, oh, hello. I'm going to see you right away. I need your help desperate. Oh, well, of course. I'll pick you up in front of your building in 15 minutes. And now... The Adventures of Superman. Creeping tendrils of fog curl and billow over the rooftops of Metropolis as Clark Kent, whom we know as Superman, emerges from the front door of his apartment building and steps into the sleek, streamlined Batmobile alongside his friend Batman. But before Kent can voice the questions that form on his lips, Wayne guns the engine and the car roars down the street. Only after they have sped through the city of Metropolis and have reached the four-lane state highway in the suburbs does Bruce Wayne, otherwise known as Batman, finally relax and turn to Kent. Thanks, pal. Okay. You like telling me the score now? Sure. Only it's such a fantastic story, I hardly know where to begin. Well, suppose you tell me where we're going. To a laboratory up in the mountain. A sonic laboratory. A what? A sonic laboratory. S-O-N-I-C. Where they're experimenting with high-speed sound waves. Oh. Trying to transmit them to the moon. What? It sounds fantastic already, doesn't it? Well, it does. These are pretty important experiments, Clark. I don't know all the details, but it's got something to do with measuring the planet, getting a clear picture of the topography. All by sound waves? Yes. It's something like radar. Oh. Well, there are three men living up there. Two scientists, Dr. James Vance and Dr. Harold Gordon, and a lab technician, Carl Johnson. Uh Uh-huh. The day before yesterday, I went up to see Carl. Robinson, Chicago. Oh, I see. I arrived pretty late in the evening, and a thunderstorm had broken over the mountain. Well, it was about 10 o'clock, and we were all sitting around in the shack they used for living quarters, just chewing the fat, and the storm got worse and worse. Think this will last all night, Carl? Can't tell, Bruce. Sometimes they break up as quickly as they start. Sometimes they last for hours. Well, I certainly hope it's clear tomorrow. I want to start transmitting early. Well, can't you transmit anyway, Dr. Vance? No, it's much too dangerous. You see, Bruce, we use hundreds of thousands of volts of electricity every time we turn on the equipment. And with all the electricity in the air... You can imagine what would happen if lightning hit the antenna while the transmitter was on. Of course. Now, listen to that. The storm center must be right over us. Hey, what's the matter with the lights? They're dimming. Maybe a break in the power line. Huh? Mr. Vance. Well, what is it, Gordon? There's someone in the laboratory. What? But there couldn't be. There is, I tell you. The door's wide open and the pilot light on the transmitter panel is burning. Great, Scott. That's why the power here is low. Come on. Hurry. <laughs> Believe me, Clark, four men never got through a door as fast as we did that night. I'll bet. We didn't even stop for our wrinkles. Just charged out into the storm and ran like the devil for the lamb. Uh-huh. When we were halfway there, a bolt of lightning flashed right over our heads. I heard the air around me literally sizzle. It was gas. I can imagine. Go on. Well, the lightning hit the antenna on the lab roof. In the light, I could see the outlines of two men standing like statues, their arms thrown up to the ceiling. They must have been struck by thousands of volts of electricity. Uh-oh. Carl and I recovered almost instantly, and we raced into the lab. Hey, you were taking a chance with all that voltage. Well, we didn't think of that, Clark. We were lucky, I guess. Yeah. We didn't know if the men were alive or dead, but we carried them back to the shack and began working on them, applying every form of artificial respiration we knew. Any sign of life, Bruce? No, not yet. How about the other one? Dr. Vance? Yes. Is he coming around? No, I'm afraid it's useless. Well, we've got to keep working. The phone is dead. We can't get a doctor up here until morning. Yes, by that time, it may be too late. I wonder who they are. Why they broke into the laboratory. Well, their clothes are pretty ragged. Any identification? No, their pockets are empty. Uh, hey, hey, this one's coming around. Really? Yes. Uh, yes, I can feel his pulse now. I 
can't, Butcher. I can't. What did he say? Wait. I'm tired. Gotta stop. Can't He's go. delirious. Maybe he can understand. Uh, Wait. Can you hear me? Who are you? Harry. Harry the monk. Harry the monk? What kind of a name is that? Where did you come from? Where do you live? Who, who wants to know? Listen, Harry. You're badly hurt. We want to help you. Nobody. Nobody helps a con. Don't kid me. A con? What's he mean? He's a convict. You just want to turn me in again. I, I won't let you. It took us months to figure this break. You won't put us back there. Butcher, butcher, help me. Don't let him. He fainted again, Clark, and a few minutes later he died. There was nothing we could do for him. I see. And the other one? There was no change. He wasn't alive. He wasn't dead. Seemed to be held in some sort of suspended animation. Golly. Well, with what Harry the Monk told us, we were able to fit some of the pieces together. He and the other one, Butcher, had apparently escaped from the state prison. About five miles from the lab, and when the storm broke, they tried to take shelter in the lab. I see. One of them must have accidentally turned on the power, and then the lightning hit them. What did you do then? We decided we'd better get in touch with the authorities, so I started to town in my car. I was using my old convertible. Yeah? Well, I got halfway down the mountain road when I was blocked by a washed-out bridge. There was no other road, so I had to turn back. When I got to the lab again, there was a change in butcher. The convict they were still working on. I don't understand it. I've never come across anything like it before. Has he improved? Yes, Bruce, he's alive. Breathing fairly regularly, too. I think we've saved him. Well, then, what's bothering you? Come inside. How is he, Dr. Vance? Well, respiration is better, but I can't stand much more. Huh? Can't stand what? Get a little closer, Bruce, and listen. What in the world is that strange noise? It comes from his throat, Mr. Wayne. What? Let's get out of here. I can't stand it. I couldn't believe it, Kent, that such a strange, unearthly sound could come from a human throat. Yeah. I watched him carefully for a minute or so. Then I found the noise was giving me a bad earache, so I left the room, too. Couldn't you figure out what was causing the sound? No. There was no reason for it. No natural reason, anyway. Huh. Well, for the rest of the night, we took turns watching him, and by morning, he was conscious, though still weak. So I started out again, trying to reach town. This time you made it, I presume? Yes. The bridge was still out, so I had to swim the river. It was pretty tough going, but I reached town late in the afternoon and got in touch with the local police. What they told me frightened, and that's why I came to you. What did they tell you? The man we were holding up in the lab was Butcher Stark, a convict who'd escaped from the death house. A homicidal maniac. One of the most dangerous killers in the country. Bruce Wayne stares ahead grimly through the windshield, and his foot presses even harder on the accelerator, sending the Batmobile roaring down the highway, gulping the miles to the mountain laboratory. What will he and Superman find when they arrive? We'll know in a moment, gang, so keep listening. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. Soaring through the night to a mountain laboratory in the powerful Batmobile, Bruce Wayne continues his weird story. After I told the police that Butcher Stark was at the laboratory, they promised to send a squad up after him right away. But I was still worried, and that's why I called you. Oh, I'm glad you did. How far away are we now? About another 20 miles. Oh? Well, listen, I think time is a pretty important factor right now. Why not let me take over? Let you take... Oh, yeah, of course. Pull over into that side road there and leave the Batmobile. I'll get us up to the lab and nothing flat. The lab is up ahead on top of that mountain. Right. I see it. Now, there's the river I had to swim. See the bridge? Yes. Hang on. We're going down. I still can't get used to this sort of thing. Now, come on. Let's go inside. Carl? Dr. Gordon? That's funny. Great Scott. In the next room. What? Are those your friends? Good heavens. Dr. Vance, Carl, what could have happened? We're too late. Butcher Stark is gone. (laughs) 
Gang, there's plenty of action tomorrow in this exciting story, so don't fail to listen. Be sure to hear Chapter 2 of The Voice of Doom on The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics Magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time. Watch for the Superman Adventure Serial, soon to be shown at your local movie theater. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with amazing physical powers far beyond those of mortal men, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, wages a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Today, Superman becomes fully aware of Butcher Stark's fantastic power as he and his friend Batman arrive at the secret mountain laboratory and make a terrible discovery. Inside, Wayne. Hurry. Carl? Dr. Vance? Carl, where are you? Great Scott, the next room. Come on. But what? Look. Oh, no. Dr. Vance? Carl? Superman, they're unconscious. I know, I know. We're too late. Butcher Stark has escaped. <laughs> The Adventures of Superman. A sudden midnight phone call from Bruce Wayne, otherwise known as Batman, and a hurried drive through the night to a distant mountain laboratory has plunged Superman into a strange adventure, one packed with terrifying possibilities. For on the long trip, Batman related a weird story of two escaped convicts who, at the height of a raging thunderstorm, had taken refuge in a sonic laboratory housing deadly high-tension power equipment. Lightning suddenly struck the lab, charging the steel structure with thousands of volts of electricity. One of the convicts died as a result of burns, but the other survived, thanks to the unceasing efforts of the three scientists who lived in the lonely mountain camp. Then, however, Batman made a strange discovery. I don't understand why or how such a thing could happen, Clark, but as the convict got stronger, a change seemed to take place in him. When he spoke, even though his voice was weak, he made our ears hurt. Great Scott. The pain went right through him. And he doesn't know it yet, but when he finds out, Lord knows what he'll do. Because, and this is the payoff, he's been identified as Butcher Stark, a homicidal maniac who'd escaped from the death house, the most dangerous killer alive. But now, Batman and Superman have arrived at the laboratory, only to discover that they are too late. Two of the scientists are sprawled on the floor unconscious. Sweeping the building with his X-ray vision, the Man of Steel easily sees that Butcher Stark has escaped. What do we do, Superman? Take care of these men first. Think you can bring them around? I'll try. Get some water, will you? The kitchen is in there. Right. Carl. Carl, can you hear me? Bruce? Yes? You said there were three men up here, didn't you? Yes. Carl, Dr. Vance. Great guns. Where's Dr. Gordon? Here. In the kitchen. Is he unconscious, too? No, he's... He's beyond help. Oh, no. Here, here's the water and a wet towel. We've got to bring these men, too. Find out what happened. Uh, uh, wait, wait. The car's coming out of it. Uh, Carl. Carl, can you hear me? Uh, He's opening his eyes. Thank goodness. Carl. Carl, this is Bruce. Uh, Bruce Wayne. Bruce. Bruce, it's you. Yeah. Oh, thank heavens you're here. What happened, Carl? We, we thought you'd never come. He got worse and worse. We couldn't handle him. He was a wild man. Easy, easy, man. I... When did he escape? How? That voice, it, it drove us mad. We couldn't stand it. Then he, he he must have overheard us talking about calling the police. Now, he... wait. When did this happen? You've got to catch him, Bruce. He's a killer. I know, Carl. I know, but he's... Still... Bruce! What's the matter with you? What? Wait, wait a minute. Something's wrong. Why... Why are you just moving your lips like that? My lips? But I... Bruce! Say something. Talk to me. Good heavens, Carl. Like Bruce... He's deaf. He can't hear a thing. Good heaven. It, it isn't you. It's me. My, my ears. I can't hear. 
I'm deaf. Easy, Carl. Easy. Oh. These men need medical attention badly. I'm deaf. You stay here, Bruce. Wait for the police. I'll take them to Metropolis oh. and get back as fast as I can. <laughs> Sorry to get you out of bed, Doctor, but these men need your help badly. I'll do what I can. Uh, what happened to them, anyway? Well, it's rather hard to explain, but briefly, they were subjected to sound in the higher frequencies, and they fainted. As you see, one of them has recovered, but now he seems to be totally deaf. Hmm. Risky business. Sound is dangerous. Can kill a man if it's used the wrong way. Yes, I know. Well, I'll go in and examine them now. Thank you, Doctor. Oh, uh, do you mind if I use your phone? Not at all. I'll let you know the results of the examination as soon as I can. Fine, thank you. Hello, operator. Will you try to get through to the Sonic Laboratory near Mountain View for me? That's right. The line was out earlier tonight, but it may have been restored by now. All right. I'll wait. Hello? That's you, Wayne. Superman. Did you get to a doctor? Yes, he's examining them now. Anything new up there? No, well, the police arrived a few minutes ago. Good. I told them what happened, and they've started to search the mountain for Stark. Fine. And since the only road out of here is blocked by that washed-out bridge, the police think they have a good chance of finding him. Did you tell them about his voice? Well, I I tried to, but... Well, they laughed at me. They laughed? Yes. They thought I was giving them a line. Can't blame them in a way. The story is fantastic. Yes, I know, but they may be walking right into trouble. I know. Now, look, when will you get back? As soon as the doctor finishes his examination. Good. Step on it, will you? I can't help feeling something else is going to happen. Sit tight. I'll be there before you know it. So long. Stay right where you are. Great guns. Stand still, I said. Oh, oh, my ears. What's the matter, bud? Stop it. <laughs> don't you like my voice? Stop it. You don't like it, no, do you? No, no. <laughs> well, that proves stop. I really got something now. And I'm going to make the most of it. No, no, stop. Yes, sir, I'm going to make the most of it. the last despairing cry, Bruce Wayne presses his hands to his ears frantically, then pitches headlong to the floor where he lies deathly still, where evil laughter continues to bubble from the cruel lips of Butcher Stark as he stares down at the limp figure. What is this strange power he possesses? We'll learn more in just a moment, gang, so keep listening. the adventures of Superman. The first rays of the morning sun fan out over the eastern horizon and tint the mountain crests a golden red as Superman returns from Metropolis with the results of the doctor's examination. As he swoops low over the laboratory, he suddenly pauses in midair, where something seems wrong. Then he pales as he sees his friend Batman, arms flung wide, sprawled on the floor. Streaking earthward, he breaks into the small shack. Bruce, Batman, can you hear me? Can you hear me, man? Yes, yes, it's all right, Superman. Oh, you don't have to shout. I hear you. Thank goodness. I, I thought maybe... Yes, Stark was here, but I played it cozy. I pretended I couldn't stand his voice and faint. Good man. He swallowed it. When he left, I tried to follow him, but lost him. Well, then why were you... I thought you were Stark, coming back. So I pretended I was still out. Oh, how long ago was he here? He showed up just after you called. That was no more than a half hour ago. That means he must still be somewhere on the mountain. Yes, I guess so. Okay, then I'm going after him right now. Wait, wait, take me with you. Oh, are you sure you're strong enough? Yes, of course I am. All right, then let's go. Butcher Stark is too dangerous to run around loose another minute. See him yet? No, not a sign of him. But we've almost covered the whole mountain. You don't have to tell me that. Look, Bruce. The doctor told me that Carl and Vance were subjected to high-frequency sound never equaled by man. A sound that can easily cause death. Then that means Butcher Stark... Right. That's why we've got to find him and stop him. Well, this is our one chance. We know he must be here on the mountain somewhere. So we've got to get him before he... Wait a minute. Down there, a man lying on the road. Who is it? Down. Down. This is the police officer who was guarding the breeches buoy that was thrown over the river. Uh -oh. And that's the only way off the mountain. And look... There were two police squad cars here before, and now there's only one. We've failed, Bruce. Butcher Stark has escaped again. And now, with his newfound power to kill, Lord knows what will happen. 
A fat man bends despairingly over the unconscious officer. Superman stares down the road but can see nothing. The mad killer has broken out and is now free to use his deadly power anytime, anywhere, and on anyone. Can Superman possibly catch up to him? And if he does, what will happen? You'll find out tomorrow, gang. So be sure to listen. Don't fail to tune in again tomorrow. Same time, same station for Chapter 3 of The Voice of Doom on The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics Magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time. Watch for the Superman adventure serial soon to be shown at your local movie theater. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. <laughs> It's Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with amazing physical powers far beyond those of mortal men, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, wages a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Today, Superman begins a relentless pursuit of Butcher Stark as the escaped convict speeds toward a place of refuge, ruthlessly cutting down all opposition. Wondering when they'd show up. Well, I'll take care of him. All right, you out of that car. Drop that gun, copper. What the? Drop it! Oh! Oh, my ears! <laughs> That's better. Now, take yourself a nice long nap! Oh. <laughs> And now, the adventures of Superman. When Butcher Stark, the escaped convict who had been struck by lightning in a mountain laboratory, was finally revived, a weird noise was heard each time he spoke. A vibrant, penetrating tone which caused great pain to any listener. A phenomenon caused by the thousands of volts of electricity which had entered Stark's body after passing through the high-frequency sound equipment of the laboratory. So, a man already feared as a homicidal maniac was given added strength to resume his career of crime and death. Superman and Batman left the mountain laboratory to search for the dangerous killer. But reaching the only way out, they found the police officer left on guard lying unconscious in the roadway, and one of the two police squad cars gone. Butcher Stark had broken clear. Now leaving Batman to care for the unconscious officer, the man of steel soars upward until the mountain beneath him assumes the proportions of an anthill, and the winding road a thin white thread. Then he circles and carefully scans the surrounding countryside. In that squad car, Stark would have to stay on the mountain road, so let's see. There are no cutoffs until it reaches that town, and there it feeds into a main highway. Hey, there's a man sitting on the porch of a house right next to the intersection. Maybe he can help me. Down! Down! Good morning. Great house fat if it ain't Superman. Where'd you come from? Out of the sky? Well, you might say that. Tell me, uh, have you been sitting out here long? Yep, ever since after breakfast. I always sit out here and watch the folks and the cars go by. Uh, did you see a police car turn off the mountain road a while ago? Yep, Trooper Allen's car it was, going lickety split. That's just what I want to know. Tell me, Must did you know? Must have been off his speed, though. Didn't wave at me like he usually does. Oh, I shouldn't wonder. Which way did he go? Come to think of it, he wasn't wearing his uniform, neither. Please, which way? And did... I didn't exactly see his face real close. Say, maybe don't... it wasn't Trooper Allen. It wasn't. Now, will you please tell me which way he went? Uh, 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 turned on to the main highway, going south. South, thank you. Up, up, and away! Like a comet, the man of steel arches up into the morning sky and surveys the highway to the south. With his powerful vision, he scours the many side roads and finds them empty. And he continues his curious flight until, a few minutes later, over the town of Claremont, a suburb of Metropolis, he finally catches sight of the police car. Coming down to the narrow side street where it is parked, he examines it quickly. Oh, 
tank still a quarter full. No sign of mechanical failure. Tires are still good. Now, why did he leave it? Now, let's see if he's still in town. No, no sign of him. Huh. Now, where in the world... Uh-oh, that's the answer. Eyes suddenly lighting on a railroad station not two blocks away. Superman realizes that Butcher Stark must have abandoned the car to continue his flight by train. So, resuming his guise of Clark Kent, he hurries over to question the station master. Uh, excuse me, can you tell me when the last train to Metropolis left this station? Yep, 810. Won't be another till 853. I see. Uh, were there many people getting on from here? Are you kidding? This is a commuter town, pal. That train is always jammed. Oh. I don't suppose you noticed a rather heavy-set man wearing shabby clothes. Look, Mr. Me, I don't have time to notice anybody. Always I usually see hands reaching for tickets. Oh, well, you, you, you must be conscious of voices. I mean, you hear people asking for tickets all day long. Didn't you notice a rather odd voice this morning? Well, I don't know. Well, I... think, man, please. It, it, it... Uh, say, say, you're right, it did. You did? Just as the 810 pulled in, a fellow whispered to me. Could hardly hear him. Bought a ticket to the city. Fine. Do you know if you made that train? Yeah, just. Yes. Okay, when does it arrive in Metropolis? 853. 53, huh? That gives me less than 20 minutes. All right, thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Striding quickly out of the station, the mild-mannered reporter finds a hidden corner in a massive express and baggage, and there, resuming his true identity of Superman, arrows down the tracks in pursuit of the train and butcher Stark. Up! Up! And away! Just as the train bearing the man he believes to be Butcher Stark winds across the many switches of the large Metropolis Railroad Yard to begin the final run through four miles of tunnel to the terminal... Superman catches up with it, and landing on the rear platform of the last car, he again becomes Clark Kent. Then he begins a careful search of the train. Through one car after another, Kent worms his way along crowded aisles, scanning every face as the train roars closer and closer to Metropolis. The third car, nothing. The fourth car, nothing. The fifth, the sixth, the seventh, still nothing. Finally, he reaches the front car of the train. Slowly, as though afraid to reach the last row of seats, walks through the aisle, his keen eyes searching. He passes a young couple, an elderly man, two soldiers, a girl immersed in a morning tabloid, a mother with two children, a young businessman. And then, there are only three people left, all men seated in the last row of seats. Kent takes a tentative step forward and suddenly freezes as his keen ears pick up a hoarse whisper. Excuse me, mister. Can you tell me what time we get to the terminal? Uh-oh. That's him. That's the killer. Butcher Stark. Superman has finally caught up to Butcher Stark. What will happen when they meet face to face? We'll know in just a moment, gang, so keep listening. The Adventures of Superman. The desperate search is over, and Superman, in his guise of Clark Kent, has finally caught up to Butcher Stark on a commuter train less than five minutes away from the Metropolis Terminal. Realizing there might be danger to the other passengers in the car should he close with the escaped convict now, Kent strides back to the conductor who is waiting on the car platform. I beg your pardon, sir, but is there any way for you to stop this train now? Delay its arrival for a few minutes? Stop the train? What for? There's an escaped convict sitting up in that seat there, right next to the window. If he should get loose in the crowds at the terminal, we'll never be able to catch now, him. Now, just a minute there. How do I Listen, know that I'm there's... Clark Kent of the Daily Planet. I've trailed that man all the way from the mountains upstate. He's a killer. He escaped from the death house day before yesterday. Oh, yeah? We've got to stop him now. Once we're in the terminal, it'll, it'll be too late. Well, I can't stop the train here. We'd mess up the whole schedule. Well... There must be something you can do. This is... Hey, you're not pulling my leg now. I swear I'm not. Okay, I'll see what I can do. You better wait here. All right, but hurry, man. Hurry! Tensely, Kent watches as the conductor walks up the aisle of the car, then pauses at the door to the front platform to stare curiously at Butcher Stark. No! No, don't stare at him! Don't! But his whispered warning is too late. Stark, alive to any strange gesture or incident, suddenly rises and walks back down the aisle straight toward Kent. Well... It looks as if it's up to me. Out of my way, Bart. Hold it, Stark. You're not going anywhere. Oh, no. Now, don't start anything here. I'm warning you. Oh, no, you won't, Bart. You can't stop me. Oh, my ears. <laughs> oh. That's it, Bart. Hold your ears, but it won't do you no good. Oh. Oh. Butcher 
Dark evil laughter roars through the train. Windows are shattered. Electric light bulbs explode and passengers clutch their ears in sudden unbearable pain. Kent, standing right beside the convict, suddenly pales, then falls helplessly backward. Well, it looks as if Stark's ghastly power has overcome the might of Superman himself. What will happen now? Can the killer be stopped? There's a startling new development in Monday's exciting episode, gang. So don't fail to listen. Tune in, same time, same station, for Chapter 4 of The Voice of Doom on The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics Magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time. Watch for the Superman adventure serial soon to be shown at your local movie theater. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. <laughs> It's Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with amazing physical powers far beyond those of mortal men, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, wages a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Today, having followed a trail from the Sonic Laboratory to Metropolis, Superman, in his guise of Clark Kent, finally comes face-to-face with Butcher Stark, and falls victim to his deadly power. Out of my way, bud. Don't start anything, Stark. This is as far as you go. Oh, yeah? That's what you think. Oh, what the... Changing your mind now, ain't you? Oh, my ears. Ha-ha! <laughs> Hurt's done it. Hurt's real bad. Stop it. Hurt's done it. I'm sorry, you can't. Nobody can. <laughs> Nobody in the whole cockeyed world can stop what you start now. <laughs> Adventures of Superman. Attention, all cars, District 9. All cars, District 9. Proceed at once to Metropolis Railroad Terminal. Emergency. Fire equipment and ambulances already notified. Operate on Disaster Plan 3. Repeat. The normal rush and bustle of the Metropolis Railroad Terminal during the morning hours has suddenly become disorder and confusion. Throngs of commuters pause in their usual mad dash to work to cluster near the train gates and watch open mouths as scores of ambulance orderlies file between police lines carrying stretcher loads of unconscious men and women as Perry White, Daily Planet editor and mayor of Metropolis, approaches the scene. Oh, Mayor White, I'm glad you got here, sir. Hello, Kane. Where's Inspector Henderson? He was way uptown when the alarm came in, told me to act as his deputy. Boy, what's the story here? We... We don't exactly know yet. What do you mean, you don't exactly know? What happened to that train? No, why are the windows all broken? Well, this is the story as I've gotten it so far, sir. The train was a regular commuter local from Claremont. It was running on time and everything was normal. Yes, yes. It started to pull in on this track here when suddenly there was a strange noise of some kind. All the windows in the first two cars were shattered and the train came to an automatic stop right where you see it. Well, what do you mean by a strange noise? Was it uh, an explosion of some kind? No, sir. At least there's no evidence of any explosion, that is. There's no damage to any of the cars other than the broken windows and, oh, yes, all the light bulbs are gone, too. Everything made of glass is shattered. Hang it all, Kane. Do you mean to tell me that all this was caused by a strange noise? There seems to be no other explanation, sir. Everyone who heard it was conscious of a sharp pain, like a, a severe earache, and then it was all over. Well, that's the most fantastic thing I ever heard of. Uh, I want to examine the cars myself. Yes, sir. This way, sir. See, Mayor White, the center of the, well, whatever happened, seems to have been hey, about here. Hey, uh, watch where you're going, Kane. You almost stepped on that man. Oh, sorry. One of the stretcher bearers should come for him. Great Caesar's ghost. Well, what's the matter? It's, it's Clark Kent. Clark Kent? Well, I'll... Kent. Kent, come on, come on. Snap out of it, boy. Snap out of it. Oh. He's opening his eyes. Oh, Easy, what? boy. Easy. How... Easy. Chief, how did you get... No, 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 Kent. Don't try to sit up. We'll have you taken right to the hospital. Hospital? Oh, no, no, no. I'm all right now, Chief. It would be better, Mr. Kent. You should have a doctor look you over. I don't need a doctor. I'm all right. No, you are, eh? Then why do you keep shaking your head like that? Hell, it's a funny buzzing noise in my ears. Uh, look, Chief, I... I've got something to tell you. Let's get out of here. All right. Kane, I'm going back to my office in City Hall with Kent. 
If anything new develops, call me there. How do you feel now, Kent? Oh, all right, Chief, but my head is still ringing like a Chinese gong. Mm, that's funny. All the other people in those first two cars are still unconscious. How in the world did you recover so quickly? Oh, I, I, I guess I was lucky. Uh, as usual. Say, what in tarnation were you doing on that train, anyhow? I was trying to catch the man who was responsible for what you saw there. Well, what man is that? Butcher Stark. What? Killer who escaped from the death house at state prison day before yesterday. Stark. You, you, you mean he's here in Metropolis? That's right. Great gee, how, how did he... I mean, no, what, no, no, what, what wait is Wait a minute, do? wait a minute. This is going to be pretty hard for you to swallow, so I suggest you just sit down, loosen your collar, and listen hard for two minutes. All right. All right, Ken, go on, go on. Let me have it, let me have it. Well, it began last night. At least that was when I was brought into it. That ma- I mean, uh, uh, Bruce Wayne picked me up in his car and drove me up to the mountains. While we were... Now, now wait. What time was this? A little after midnight. Oh, it's a strange time for a drive. Uh, but go on. Well, it, it seems Bruce had been visiting a friend up at a sonic laboratory in the mountains. A sonic laboratory? Yes, you, you know, where they experiment with the power of sound. Oh, oh, oh yes. Well, uh, while he was there, two men who were later identified as escaped convicts broke into the lab. And one of them was Stark? That's right. But as it happened, there was a thunderstorm up there at the time, and a heavy bolt of lightning struck the lab while the two convicts were in it. Uh-oh. One of them died soon after, but Stark somehow managed to survive. And when he came to... There was a strange sound coming from his throat. Well, what do you mean by strange? Uh, a whistle? A, no, you might call uh, it a, an electronic hum. And what would an electronic hum be? Well, I, I can't explain exactly, Chief, except that it... Well, it, it, it's a deadly penetrating sound. And that was coming from Stark's throat? Yes. Incredible. Apparently, that bolt of lightning passing through the high-frequency sonic equipment of the laboratory made Butcher Stark capable of creating deadly sound. Sound that so far has knocked people unconscious and broken windows. And there's no telling what will happen should he really shout. Now, no, wait a minute. Look here, Kent. Are you trying to make me believe that a man can knock people out with his voice? No, I told you it would be hard to believe. Wait till you hear the rest. As Stark grew stronger, his voice apparently became more and more unbearable. By the time I reached the laboratory with Bruce, one of the scientists was dead, the other two were unconscious... Oh, no. ...and Butcher Stark was gone. Oh. And then, well, to make a long story short, I went after him. Traced him to Claremont, found out he'd boarded a train for Metropolis... I caught up to the train. Now, how did I... you manage that? Well, that isn't important, Chief. What is important is that Stark grew suspicious and started to leave. I tried to stop him, but he just raised his voice and, well, you know the rest. And you mean to say that more than a hundred people were knocked unconscious by, uh, by, by his voice alone? That's right. I was standing right next to him. It was awful. The pain went right through my head. I, I, I just couldn't take it. Kent, I have known you for a long time. You're one of my best reporters. But honestly, I can't swallow this yarn. It's too ridiculous. Well, Chief, all you have to do is get hold of Bruce Wayne. He'll tell hey, you. Excuse me. Yes? Oh, send him in. Speak of the devil. Bruce? Yeah. Hello, Kent. Bruce, just the man I want to see. What happened to you, Kent? I've been looking all over town for you. Well, I... Your office, your apartment. I just came here to ask Mayor White about you. I met up with Butcher Stark, and I couldn't hold him. What? Uh, Wayne, is uh, he telling the truth? Does Butcher Stark have a voice that can knock people unconscious? Butcher Stark? Who's he? Bruce. Didn't you take Kent up to a sonic laboratory last night and tell him a story about a man who'd been struck by lightning? Me? I certainly did not. Bruce, are you out of your mind? On the contrary, Kent, you must be losing yours. Because I haven't the slightest idea of what you're talking about. Stunned by Bruce Wayne's flat denial, Kent sinks back in his chair and stares at his friend, who merely looks at Perry White and shrugs his shoulders. What is the meaning of this obvious lie? We'll know in a moment, gang, so keep listening. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. With a flat denial of his part in the strange adventure at the Sonic Laboratory, Bruce Wayne, otherwise known as Batman, has put Kent in a difficult position. And now, a few minutes later, when he and Bruce have left City Hall... Kent demands an explanation. All right, Bruce, what's the idea? Give. Sorry, Kent, but I had to do it. Why? You made me look like an idiot. The chief thinks I'm crazy. It was the only way. We can't let the news leak out. What are you talking about? I saw Johnson and Dr. Vance this morning. Oh? They warned me that Butcher Stark is in possession of a deadly power. Well, of course he and is. And if people knew about it, they'd be panic-stricken. It's got to be kept quiet until he can be stopped. But I still don't see why and you... another have... thing. Stark is no great intellect. I doubt if he knows what to do with his power right now. But if somebody who is smart knew what he could do and got hold of him... Oh, I get it. But we may not be able to keep it a secret forever, you know. If we can keep quiet just until we catch him. I caught him, Wayne. He was standing right in front of me, and I couldn't do a thing about it. Well, you weren't ready for yes, him. Yes, I was. And his voice knocked me cold. 
You know, Bruce, strange as it may sound, I think Superman is more vulnerable to start than anyone else. Are you kidding? No. You see, my hearing is keen. Keener than anyone else. And that's where Stark's great power lies. So unless I can find some way to withstand his voice, I, Superman, am utterly helpless. A worried look creasing his brow, Superman expresses his inner sense of helplessness against Butcher Stark. The one man in the world whose power seems great enough to conquer the Man of Steel. What will Superman do? What can he do? And what will be Butcher Stark's next move? Gang, you're in for a startling surprise in our next suspense-packed episode. So don't fail to listen. Same time, same station, to episode five of The Voice of Doom on The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time. Watch for the Superman adventure serial soon to be shown at your local movie theater. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. <laughs> Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with amazing physical powers far beyond those of mortal men, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, wages a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Today, Superman, in his guise of Clark Kent, resumes his pursuit of Butcher Stark as he discusses with Bruce Wayne the escaped convict's fantastic new power that may surpass even his own might. You see, Bruce, Stark's big trump card is the sonic power of his voice. He can make people uncomfortable when he merely whispers. Don't I know it. If he raises his voice only a trifle, he shatters anything made of glass. If he should ever shout at the top of his lungs... Oh, I hate to think what would happen then. <laughs> After all, Kent, you're Superman. Yes, yes, and that makes me more vulnerable than anyone else. Well, how do you figure that? Being Superman, I'm gifted with keener hearing than anyone in this world. Therefore, I'm more sensitive to Stark's voice than anyone. And if I don't find some way to conquer the sonic power in his voice, I'll lose again, and I'll lose every time we meet. And now, the adventures of Superman! Created by the chance fusion of man's mechanical genius and the awesome power of the elements, the escaped convict, Butcher Stark's deadly strength is now a servant to his warped criminal brain, transforming him into one of the most dangerous men alive. And to Superman falls the gigantic task of finding one man in a city of more than seven million. As our story continues, Superman, in his guise of Clark Kent, is in his midtown apartment, where he discusses the situation with his friend Bruce Wayne, otherwise known as Batman. Together, they try to formulate a plan for their next move. Metropolis is a big town, Bruce. It's going to be a tough job. You bet. How are we going to find him? First, we must make sure he does not leave Metropolis by asking Mayor White to order the police to guard every road, bridge, and tunnel leading out of the city. Okay. Then what? Well, Stark may have come to Metropolis because he knew someone here who would hide him. So maybe if we tackle that angle, we could check his pals from two sources, the state prison and the police records here. I see. Then we narrow the field down by checking up on each one personally. Is that it? Just about. Now, you go up to the state prison. I was afraid I'd get that job. And remember one thing, Bruce. We've got to move fast. If Stark should ever get smart enough to know how to use his power... Oh, brother, anything can happen. Right. At present, Stark knows how to use his voice, but he doesn't know what to do with it. We've got to catch up to him before someone with brains takes him in hand. Well, talking about it won't get us anywhere. Right, let's go. Oh, wait, you've got company. Oh, great, of all times. Oh, no, you stay back. I'll answer it. Say you're not home. Good idea, Bruce. Yes? Mr. Clark Kent's apartment? Yes. Thank you. Just a minute. He isn't home. Isn't home? Then who's that? Why, uh... You are Mr. Kent, aren't you? Now, now, look here. Oh, let it go, Bruce. What can I do for you, miss? I'm Miss Graham, your nurse. I've been assigned to your case by Mr. White. Now, will you please go to bed? I'm not sick. On the contrary, you're quite ill. A brain specialist and a psychiatrist will be here in a few minutes to examine... What? Oh, brother, this is rich. It's no laughing matter. (laughs) Mr. Kent is very ill. Now, will you kindly go into your bedroom and disrobe, Mr. Kent? And you, sir, please show me where the clothes closet is. <laughs> well, uh, here, I- I'll show you, Miss Graham. You should be getting into bed. Yes, yes, sure. All right, all right. Here, here's the closet. Oh, thank you. Now, will you please... Sorry, go- Miss Graham, but I have to do this. Clark, <laughs> what are you doing? Hand me that chair. Hurry. Yeah, here. There. 
Yeah, that should hold her. Yeah, but you can't leave her locked in that closet. She'll only be there a few minutes. You heard it there. A couple of doctors were coming. I'll leave the front door open for them. Come on, let's go. Together, the two men stride quickly down the hall to the self-service elevator, and Kent jabs angrily at the call button as Bruce Wayne stands by, smiling broadly. When the elevator appears, two distinguished-looking men step out. Kent ducks his head in quick alarm. Doc Bruce, quickly! Hey, what goes here? Quiet. Okay, but... Okay, come on, Bruce, fast. Boy, that sure was close. You think those were your doctors? And they looked like it. Now, look, you beat it up to the state prison, and I'll check the police files. And we'll meet this evening in my apartment. Meanwhile, some distance across the city, a strange meeting is taking place in a large warehouse near the waterfront. Contrasting strangely with the dusty, crate-filled storage chambers is an ornate private office where soft, indirect lighting gleams over a deep tufted carpet, heavy mahogany desk, and comfortable chairs. However, the calm, peaceful setting belies the scene taking place in the room as a man and a woman face each other across the desk, his eyes cool and mocking, hers flaming angrily. Well, Vito, what do you say? So the uh, famous Scarlet Widow comes out of the, uh, shall we say, retirement with another one of her fabulous plans for power. Eh? You may skip the sarcasm, Vico. I didn't ask for comment on my plan. No, you asked for my help so that you can regain your former position, correct? Yes. Well, what's your answer? My answer, madam, is no. You're a fool. No, I'm now a respectable businessman. Huh. Become soft, because... Not soft, Widow. Just careful. You know, the law in Metropolis has been very stiff since Perry White became mayor. <laughs> so, you're afraid of White, eh? Maybe yes, maybe no. Anyhow, I see no reason to risk my new reputation by helping a has-been. How dare you say such a thing to me? <laughs> if you'll excuse me, Widow, I'm a very busy man. Wait! Vico, you must help me. You must. I told you I'm busy. The door's behind you. Good day. Very well. Thank you for giving me so much of your valuable time. I shall not bother you again. That will suit me fine. Goodbye, Vico. Santa Marie. Hello, Vico. Surprised to see me, eh? Whirling in the direction of Vico's horror-stricken gaze, the Scarlet Widow sees the large, hulking figure of a man framed in the doorway. A man she doesn't recognize, but one whose hoarse, quivering voice immediately identifies him as Butcher Stark. What is the escaped convict doing here? What will this meeting mean to Superman? We'll learn more in just a moment, gang. So keep listening. Adventures of Superman. <laughs> Having been denied assistance for some strange new scheme to return to power, the infamous Scarlet Widow, one of Superman's most hated enemies, was about to leave Big Frank Biko's office in a downtown warehouse when the door opened to admit Butcher Stark. Now the Scarlet Widow stands in the doorway, transfixed, as Stark lumbers toward the desk behind which Biko is slowly rising from his chair. Hello, Biko. Surprised to see me? What? What are you doing here, Butcher? I thought you... You thought I was up in the state pen, getting ready to walk that last mile, huh? It's supposed to happen tomorrow, but it ain't going to happen now. Well, uh, what are you doing here? I figured you'd want to help me, Vico, seeing as how you didn't come up for me at the trial like you were supposed to. Well, that, uh, that was a mistake. Sure, sure. So now you're going to make up for it, ain't you? How do you mean? Hide me someplace till the heat's off. Then give me some dough. Say a grand a week. Regular. See that I go on living nice and easy. Get your hands up, Butcher. Put down that gun. No, not until you're back in the death house where you belong. Put it down, I said. Oh, what? The... Drop the rod. My head. Oh, my head. I've picked up a mighty fancy trick since I've been gone, Vicko. Oh. Stop it. Stop A trick that'll make me king kid around here. Oh. <laughs> Look at him drop. It's so easy. So easy. <laughs> Oh. So, you saw it, huh? Yes. I was in back of you. I saw you do it with your voice. Just your voice. I could feel it myself. Yeah. Pretty good, ain't it? Pretty good. My friend, you don't know how good. Sit 
down. I'd like to talk to you. Thrown off guard by the sudden oily sweetness in the Scarlet Widow's voice, Butcher Stark allows himself to be pushed into a chair and listens as she begins to speak quickly and forcefully. So now what Superman and Batman have most feared has come to pass. Butcher Stark's terrible power is revealed to someone who knows how to use it. And as Superman said, anything can happen now. You won't want to miss our next action-packed episode tomorrow, gang. So be sure to tune in tomorrow. Same time, same station. And hear Chapter 6 of The Voice of Doom on The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics Magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time. Watch for the Superman adventure serial soon to be shown at your local movie theater. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. It's Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with amazing physical powers far beyond those of mortal men, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, wages a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Today, Superman, in his guise of Clark Kent, begins a methodical search for Butcher Stark, visiting and phoning everyone in Metropolis to whom the escaped convict might turn for help. Hello, I'd like to speak to Duke Nalon. Talking. You once knew Butcher Stark, didn't you? Who wants to know? My name is Clark Kent, and I thought you would know that he escaped from the state penitentiary. Well? Well, I wondered if he's tried to get in touch with you. You see, he's... No, he ain't. And listen, mister, take my advice and stay clear of Butcher Stark. He's a killer. Mix up with him, and you're a dead pigeon. <laughs> Adventures of Superman. In his guise of Clark Kent, Superman has been working with desperate speed to track down and capture the escaped convict Butcher Stark. Realizing that though Stark is fully aware of the awesome power of his voice, he is still not smart enough to use it to best advantage and may very soon come in contact with someone who is. But the Man of Steel apparently has entered in a losing race, for Stark's fearful ability has become known to the Scarlet Widow, one of Superman's most dangerous enemies who has already begun plans to use Stark to regain her former evil power. Now we find Kent at Central Police Headquarters with Inspector Henderson, who hands him a sheaf of papers. Well, this is everything we have on Stark, Kent. He developed a big reputation as a stronger man in Chicago. Then he came to Metropolis, where he hooked up with Big Frank Vicko. Frank Vicko, the big-time operator who controlled the whole West Side? Uh-huh. One of Mike Hickey's boys. Mm, sure, I know. What does Stark do for Vicko? All the usual stuff. When anyone disagreed with Vico, Stark was sent out, and one of two things happened. The fellow either changed his mind and agreed with Vico, or he got a pair of concrete shoes and landed at the bottom of the Metropolis River. Mm, if you knew that, why didn't you get him sooner? Because we could never prove it. Oh, I see. But finally, we got a break. Stark got a bit careless on one of his jobs, and we were able to pin it squarely on him. He was brought to trial, convicted, and sentenced to death. What did Vico do about that? Oh, Vico was smart. He saw the handwriting on the wall. So he let Stark go to the death house, which was a good way to get rid of one of his associates. Perfect. What's Thicko doing now? Running a respectable business. Owns a warehouse on the west side and operates a trucking company. Everything open and above board. I see. What about the people Stark went around with, his friends? Well, he didn't have too many. He was always more of a lone wolf. Oh? But uh, this is a list of the men he was usually seen with. Oh, thanks. Don't bother with the names that have a red check mark next to them. They're dead. Okay. You mind if I hold on to this for a while? Well, no, no. I have another copy. Going to check up now? Yes. Good. And keep me posted. I have my men working on some other angles. We can get together later and compare notes. Fine. And thanks a lot, Inspector. It's okay. Good luck. Are you Harry Boyle? Yeah. 
I'm Clark Kent of the Daily Planet. You knew Butcher Stark, didn't you? What's it to you? Well, did you or didn't you know him? What if I did? He's up in the pen, going to get his neck stretched. I've got news for you, Boyle. He escaped. What? And he may come around looking up his old friends. If you see him, I suggest you notify the police right away. You bet I will. I don't want to mess around with him no more. He's trouble. and plenty of it. Been running this shoe shine stand long? Yes, yeah, some more than ten years. I give it the best shine in the whole of town. You see? Uh huh. Very nice. Your name is Pete Salmaggi, isn't it? That's right. Everybody, she's an old Pete. And you know everybody, huh? Sure, sure. Lots of people come here. You know Butcher Stark? Butcher Stark? What do you talk about him for? He escaped from the death house, Pete. Santa Maria. He hasn't been around here, has he? No, I don't see him, mister. Honest, I don't. I don't want nothing to do with him. Okay, but if you do see I him... I call it the cops real quick. I sure do. That's the stuff. All right, thanks for the shine. Here, keep the change. Oh, gotcha, mister. And I watch you for Butcher Stark. I watch you real good. <laughs> Mr. Kent. Huh? Oh, hello, officer. What's up? Can I, can I get in? Get in? Your car? Yeah, please. What, what for? I got a call from headquarters to take you in. What do you mean, take me in? Orders straight from Air White's office. Now, come on, Mr. Kent. But look here. Orders I... are ordered. Don't make it tough for me, please. That's the way it is. Okay. Thanks. Get going, Bill. What's the idea, Chief? And what are you doing here, Bruce? I thought you were going up to the, the state... The police pr- picked me up at the railroad terminal. I didn't even get a chance to go up to the state prison. What's the matter with you, Chief? Well, after the story you told me about a man's voice knocking people out, I'm sure you need medical attention. But it's true, I tell... Oh, Bruce, will you kindly tell him, and the truth this time? You mean you weren't telling me the truth before? He's not making it up, Mr. White. The story may sound fantastic, but it's the truth. The whole truth. You... You mean that uh, the Butcher Stark's voice can, can knock people out and, and shatter windows? And, yes, and, all of that. Oh, great Caesar, you too. You've got to believe us, Chief. And you've got to keep it a secret. Secret? Well, if I ever tried to print a story like that, they'd put me in the booby hatch. You can bet your last dollar I'll keep it a secret. And you'll help us, won't you? At least you'll give us a free hand? Yes, at least give us a chance to prove no, it. No, here I go, letting you talk me into something again. Please, Chief, please. Oh, all right, all Thanks, right. Thanks, Chief. Well, now tell us, Clark, have you learned anything? Nothing definite yet. Well, then what? There's one more angle. Big Frank Vicko. Stark used to work for him, and he may have the idea Vicko double-crossed him. Vicko? Why, he owns a warehouse on the west side near the waterfront. He isn't in the rackets anymore. No, I know, but Stark may try to change his mind. So let's get over there, Bruce. Fast. Hmm. I thought Vicko was supposed to be operating a thriving business. There's not a soul around. No, but did you notice the loading platforms downstairs? No. What about them? There were three trucks parked there, each partly loaded. There were a lot of crates and boxes stacked up around them. It looked as though the men suddenly stopped work for some reason or other. Hmm, that's funny. Say, you know where we're going? Yeah, the sign back at the head of the stairs said the office was down this hall. It's funny, there aren't any lights burning. Well, take it slow, don't bump into anything. Hey, Bruce! You should have spoken sooner. Hey, hey, strike a match, quick. Wait a minute. Wh- Look! Great guns, a body. Is he, is he... Uh, no, no, I, I can feel his pulse. He's unconscious. Hey... There's another one down the hall. And another one. Come on. What about these men? We'll take care of them later. Let's go into the office. Light another match. Okay. Uh Uh-oh. Someone else lying on the floor. Yes, and he's no trucker. Not the way he's dressed. Probably Vicko himself. Uh Uh-huh. He unconscious, too? No. He's dead. Dead? Yes, but there's not a mark on him as far as I can see. What in the world could have happened here? I don't know. Bruce, look. That desk lamp. What about it? The bulb is shattered. And that glass ashtray, it's cracked in a dozen places. And the window. Uh-oh. Stark. You guessed it. We're too late. Butcher Stark has already been here. The burning match flickers in Kent's quivering fingers and then dies, plunging the room into darkness. But the echo of Stark's deadly voice seems to linger in the stillness. What has happened to the ex-convict? We'll know more in just a moment, gang. So keep listening. Now, back to the adventures of Superman. As we continue now, it is late evening, and we find Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne in Perry White's home, concluding a report of their findings at Big Frank Vicko's warehouse. 
The four truckers we found regained consciousness just before the ambulance arrived, and they told us they heard a strange sound coming from Vico's office. So they stopped work, went up to investigate. When they got there, a man they didn't recognize... Who must have been Stark. Right. He was just leaving the office. They tried to stop him, but he merely shouted at them, and they collapsed. Just because he shouted at them? That's right, Chief. Oh, that's impossible. I, I can't swallow that. I, I can't. Well, Vico is dead, and there wasn't a mark on him. Can you think of how it happened? Well, he probably had heart failure. Well, the autopsy will prove different, I'm sure. Well, what have we got then? Stark went to see his old boss and... Oh, excuse me. Hello? Oh, yes, Henderson. Henderson? What's he want? Wait, what? Please. When? The whole wall, you say? All right, I'll be down as fast as I can. Goodbye. What is it, Chief? The Metropolis National Bank. It was robbed a few minutes ago. Oh, no. The entire wall on the south side was blasted out, and a couple of people who were near the bank at the time said they heard a sound that gave them a bad earache. Color draining from their faces, Kent and Wayne stare at each other. Butcher Stark again, this time using his power in an entirely new manner. Superman realizes that this man must be stopped, but how? Dang, there's much action and many thrills tomorrow when Stark and Superman come face to face once again. So don't miss it. Be sure to listen, same time, same station, to episode seven of The Voice of Doom on The Adventures of Superman. <laughs> Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics Magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time. Watch for the Superman Adventure Serial soon to be shown at your local movie theater. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. <laughs> Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with amazing physical powers far beyond those of mortal men, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, wages a never-ending battle for truth and justice. <laughs> Today on the phone, Mayor Perry White receives sudden startling news from Inspector Henderson. News that puts Superman back on Butcher Stark's trail. What's that, Inspector? The wall blasted out? Uh-oh, what's going on? Yes, 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 uh, I'll be right over. Uh, goodbye. What is it, Chief? Yeah, what gives now? The Metropolis National Bank was robbed 15 minutes ago. What? Great Scott. The wall on the south side of the bank was blasted open and... Yes? Witnesses said they heard a strange, ear-splitting noise just about the time it happened. <laughs> Adventures of Superman. Butcher Stark, a dangerous criminal who, by a freak of nature, developed a power that rivals the might of Superman himself, is now known to be in Metropolis and is a constant threat to the peace and welfare of every citizen. Superman and his friend Batman have been making a desperate but vain search for the escaped convict. Now, however, with the sudden startling news of the Metropolis bank robbery, Superman and Batman are certain they are back on Stark's trail again. And as Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne, they are driving to the scene of the crime while listening patiently to Mayor Perry White's angry denial oh, of no, their no, theories. Mayor, I don't care what you say. No man can blast a hole in a brick wall just by shouting at it. Not even Superman can do that. No, he certainly can. But put your start, Kent. Oh, Wayne, you're out of your mind. What about that strange ear-splitting sound witnesses reported hearing? Yes, the same sound that was heard at the Metropolis Railroad Terminal when that train was stolen. And over at the warehouse when we found Big Frank Vicko oh, dead. Oh, no, I don't know. Maybe Stark's using some kind of a machine or, or anything. Uh, but his voice? Poppycock. Well, we'll find out soon enough. Here's the bank, and there's Inspector Henderson. All right, Henderson, let's have it. What happened here? Well, as near as we can figure it right now, Mayor White, the south wall of the bank was blown out. The inside half wrecked, and the crooks got away with nearly $500,000 in cash. 500000 What about the bank watchman, Inspector Henderson? Where was he? Inside, where he was supposed to be, Kent. We found him unconscious. The doctor's trying to bring him around now. I see. Well, what kind of explosive did they use on the wall? Well, that's what puzzled me. You see, there's no evidence of any kind of glass. The wreckage isn't scattered at all. It's just heat. As though the wall simply collapsed. Uh-oh. Oh, how in blazes can a wall simply collapse? Uh, I don't know. Come on over and look for yourself, Mayor White. Oh, I certainly will. Great gun, Clark. Did you see the inside of the bank? All those teller's cages smashed to pieces, glass all over the floor? Yes. But your Stark must have really let loose this time. And how? So, now he's got $500,000. 
I wonder what he intends to do next. Well, that's anybody's guess. The point is, what are we going to do? Golly, I don't know. Let's go over to the ambulance and see if we can have a talk with the watchman. <laughs> This fellow looks awfully weak. Yeah. Hope he can hear me. Uh, hello, old timer. How do you feel now? Huh? Can you talk? I can't hear you very well. Noise in my ears. Poor old guy. What happened in the bank? I don't know. You heard a strange sound, didn't you? Yes. Yes, it was terrible. It went right through my head. Like a knife. I couldn't stand it. Where were you when it happened? At the head of the stairs. Didn't you see anything? Yes. Yes, I, I saw a car pulled up across the street. Oh? I thought it was kind of strange. The street's usually empty at night. Well, what happened then? Man got out. Started walking to the south side of the bank. There was somebody else in the car. Oh? Couldn't see him too clear. Dark. And then? I watched for a minute. And then I heard the noise and... And you passed out? Yes, so. Look, are you sure you saw someone else in the car? Positive. I see. Well, thanks, old timer, and take it easy now. You'll be all right soon. Come on, Bruce. Let's rejoin Perry White. Now, do you believe us, Steve? No. Why should I? Now, be reasonable, Mr. White. I'm trying to be reasonable, Wayne. And logical, too. You are not. I am, Kent. I grant you it may have been some new kind of invention, a machine that can shoot out sound waves, but a human voice... That's exactly what I've been trying to tell you, Chief. The voice isn't just human now. Oh, now, look here. We've seen the man use his voice. We've heard the sound ourselves. Yeah, I'm sorry, boys, but I just can't follow it. You must have been fooled somehow. No, I give up. Uh, relax, Bruce. Well, what are you going to do about the robbery, Chief? Well, the bank watchman gave us a fairly good description of the car. So? And about ten minutes after the robbery, an identical car quit the fire hydrant on 64th Avenue. It was speeding and didn't stop. So, it may have been the getaway car. Sounds like a good lead. Well, that's not all. They found broken headlight glass near the hydrant. So the whole force is scouring the town for a one-eyed car. And all roads leading out of the city are blocked. Now, if that doesn't get results, nothing will. Well, okay, we'll see. <laughs> by the skid marks. It went out of control about 100 feet back on the road and piled into a ditch here. Uh-huh. And uh, how are the two officers, Inspector? Well, they were taken to the county hospital. Unconscious. Probably were knocked out by stark sonic power. No doubt. Uh, now, listen. You're not going to start that again, are you? You're not going to tell me he did it with his voice again? Sure he did. Oh, bah. Well, whatever way he did it, Chief, it's clear that Stark has broken through. Yes, sir. He sure is heck out of Metropolis and going heaven knows where. <laughs> As Perry White and Bruce Wayne glower at each other, Kent examines the interior of the wrecked police car carefully. Suddenly he starts and beckons to Wayne. What has he found? We'll know in a moment, gang, so keep listening. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. Suddenly noticing something in the wrecked police car, Kent beckons to his friend, Bruce Wayne, and then points to the dashboard of the car. Look. Look at the dashboard clock, Bruce. Yeah. Badly smashed, isn't it? More than that, the glass is broken inwards, and the pieces have stopped the hands. Yeah. At 11.55. Right, and it's 12.20 now, which means that Butcher Stark wrecked this car only 25 minutes ago, giving him less than a half-hour lead on us. You're not thinking of going after him. Of course. Will you cover me with a chief? Cover you? How? What can I tell him? Oh, tell him... 
Tell him anything you want. Just talk fast. Oh, you give me the darndest job. Go on, now, quick. I've got to move. Pushing Wayne out on the road toward Perry White and the police car. Kent starts into a nearby clump of bushes. They won't see me here. Now, off with these clothes. Then we'll see what Superman can do. There we are, Inspector. Now, up, up, and away! <laughs> Arrowing down the broad state highway as though shot from a giant bow. Superman covers 30 miles in the wink of an eye. Then, zooming low, reverses his direction and skims the concrete pavement, searching the interior of each passing car for Butcher Stark and his unknown companion. Then, suddenly, out of the corner of his eye, he notices a small airport and a plane warming up on the runway. Literally spinning on a dime, he sweeps toward the field. And then, parked behind one of the hangars, he spots a car with a broken headlight. Butcher Stark. He's here. I've caught up to him. Now we'll see what will happen this time. Starting forward, Superman lands lightly on the concrete runway and strides purposefully toward the idling plane. This will be his second meeting with Butcher Stark, the first having ended in utter defeat for the Man of Steel. Will he be able to turn the tables, or will Stark's evil power be once again victorious? We'll know in tomorrow's action-packed episode, gang, so don't forget to listen. Be sure to tune in tomorrow, same time, same station, to Chapter 8 of The Voice of Doom on... The Adventures of Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics Magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time. Watch for the Superman Adventure Serial soon to be shown at your local movie theater. Faster than a speeding bullet! More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton who came to Earth with amazing physical powers far beyond those of mortal men, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, wages a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Today, after Butcher Stark had broken through the tight police net thrown around Metropolis, Superman finally catches up to him at a small suburban airport and prepares for a showdown. Now, this is the car he used, all right. So he must be here, ready for a getaway. Now, let's see. He's not in that plane warming up on the runway. And he's not in the hangars. Well, then where it... There. There he is. In the administration building. Now, Butcher Stark, it's you or me. <laughs> Adventures of Superman! Unknown to Superman, Butcher Stark, the escaped convict and ruthless killer, has allied himself with the Scarlet Widow, an old and dangerous opponent of the Man of Steel. Together, combining her brains and his deadly power to shatter solid objects and render people unconscious by the sound of his voice alone, they have begun a secret campaign of crime. But now, Superman, following closely on the convict's trail, has tracked him to a small airport. And though he remembers all too clearly how Stark overpowered him in their first meeting, he prepares to face the deadly killer again. I could go in and get him there, in the administration building. But there are other people around they might be hurt. Besides, I want to see who his partner is. Oh, I'll just wait out here. If he's going to take the plane that's warming up on the runway, he'll have to pass right by me. Then, we'll see. Determined not to lose sight of Butcher Stark for one second, Superman is unaware of a tall, shadowy figure gliding soundlessly across the field behind him. A figure wearing a long black dress beneath a flowing cape, its collar high, shielding drawn white cheeks, heavy-lidded eyes, and sleek, glossy black hair. It is the Scarlet Widow who pauses watching him and waiting for his meeting with Stark. 
Meanwhile, however, trouble is brewing from an entirely different source. Far down the highway, Bruce Wayne, whom we also know as Batman, is having trouble keeping Superman's identity a secret from Perry White. Oh, hang it all, Wayne. Where in thunder did Ken go now? I told you, Mr. White, to, to that farmhouse there across the field. Well, why? What for? Well, he, he thought they might have heard or seen something that would give us a, a clue as to where Butcher Stark went. Ah, ridiculous. Come on. Well, where are you going? To that farmhouse to get Ken. He's been over there long enough to get material for an encyclopedia. But now, wait. There's no sense in going all the way over there. All right, all right. I'll go alone. Oh, great guns. Wherever you are, Clark, you'd better get back here in a hurry or else we're in trouble. <laughs> There he comes, out of the administration building, and I was right, he's heading this way. He is going for that plane. And I'll just have to hit him fast and hard before he has a chance to use his voice. He's too dangerous to play around with. Okay, another three yards, Stark, and you'll get the surprise of your life. There, now. Superman, wait. What the? Remember me. Great Scott. The Scarlet Widow. Hey, what's going on? Get him, Butcher. It's Superman. Oh, it oh. is, is it? Oh, my Butcher. My head. Oh, Lord, oh. my me. I'm oh. behind you. Get there. So you're Superman, huh? Oh. The big guy himself. Well, let's see if you can take it as well as dish it out. I'll show you how I can yes. take it. You're stumbling around like you're punched us now. <laughs> You'll fall in a minute. No. <laughs> you want more, eh? Well, I'm glad to oblige. <laughs> Wave upon wave of deadly high-frequency sound throbs painfully in his head. The man of steel wheels drunkenly, staggers over the grassy turf of the field, but still fights back, trying desperately to reach Stark to curl his fingers around the killer's throat and choke off the maddening sound. But the Scarlet Widow thinks fast. Come on, Butcher! Into the plane! Quickly! As Superman staggers uncertainly again, groping blindly, the convict dashes for the plane. Then, in a matter of seconds, he is safely aboard with the Scarlet Widow and is roaring down the runway into the cloudy night sky. Relieved of the overpowering pressure, Superman's ears continue to ring, his eyes to dance wildly. And realizing that Stark is escaping, he makes one tremendous effort to gather his senses. But when his mind is finally clear again, the plane has vanished in the heavy blanket of night. I've lost him. Butcher Stark has won again. <laughs> Say, hey, Wayne, what's going on? This house is dark. Kent isn't here. Well, he's he's probably gone back already, Mr. White. Now, come on, maybe we can catch up to him. Are you kidding? We would have seen him if he'd gone back. Well, maybe not. It's a dark night, you know, and it's trouble. Stay where you are, or I'll fill your hide full of birds. Watch these places. Stay put, I said. Not him. Call the police. Oh, just a minute, sir. Come sneaking around my farm, will put you? Put that gun away before you hurt somebody. What are you doing here at this hour of night? We're looking for a friend. He came over here to talk to you. Uh, Mr. White, I... Talk to me? Yeah. Ain't been nobody here talking to me. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. Now get off my property. Go on, get. Get before all I... All right, all right. Relax and go back to bed. All right, now, Wayne. Now, what's this all about? I I don't understand it myself, Mr. White. You see, I... You understand plenty. Now, come on. Out with it. Where's Clark Kent? <laughs> Frantic, Bruce Wayne searches for an answer to Mayor White's question, but can find nothing to say. Any reply could be the wrong one, could plunge Kent deeper into trouble and reveal the all-important secret of his double identity. What can Wayne do? We'll know more in a moment, gang, so keep listening. And now, back to the adventures of... Superman! With Superman gone in his fruitless pursuit of Butcher Stark, Batman in his guise of Bruce Wayne is having great difficulty in concealing his friend's identity as Perry White questions him sharply. Now, where did Ken go, Wayne? What's he doing? I I don't know, Mr. White. Then why in places did you tell me he went to that farmhouse when he didn't? Now, look, Mr. White, I'm, I'm not Clark's guardian. I don't check up on him every minute. He, he's old enough to take care of himself, so forget it, will you? Forget it. Stand around here in the middle of the night, uh, make a fool of myself, and I shall forget it? I certainly will not. Pens up to something, and I'll be hanged if I don't find out what it is. Here, here, what's all that noise about? Clark, 
It's now where in blazes have you been? Well, I... I, I told him you went over to that farmhouse, but the farmer said you weren't there. And oh, well, no, I didn't get there. You see, what I... What do you mean out... you didn't get there? What have you been doing all this time? I went down that way, looking for a filling station or any place that might be open. I thought maybe someone might have seen Stark. May I remind you, Mr. Kent, that we have a perfectly good police department who are paid to do this kind of work? And you're not. Well, it was just an idea, Chief. You and your ideas. All right, I'm sorry, Chief. Come on, come on, come on. Back to the car now if you don't want to be left behind. Oh, you sure left me in an awful hole, Clark. I know. Thanks for covering me. Get that. What happened? Did you catch up to Stark? Yes. I caught up to him, all right. And? I was speaking, Bruce. What? Yes. Stark's power is too much for me. You were very successful, Butcher. My congratulations. Thanks, Widow, but I couldn't make him fold like all the others do. Never mind. It's enough that you staggered him. Hurt him badly. That's more than anyone has ever done to Superman before. And now we're in the clear with $5,000 in this bag. When do we split it? You don't seem to understand. The money belongs to the partnership. We shall use it to finance our next undertaking. Hey, now, wait a minute. You must believe I'm not trying to cheat you. But you don't think we're going to stop at a mere bank robbery, do you? Uh, what's wrong with 500 grand? We're out for bigger things, Butcher. I make the plans, you execute them. And together we'll get the whole country in a stranglehold. With a sinister smile on her thin lips, the scarlet widow settles back in her seat and unconsciously curls her tapering fingers in a gesture of greed. Where will she and Butcher Stark strike next? And will Superman be able to catch up to them again? Our story takes a new twist Monday, gang, so be sure to listen. Tune in same time, same station for episode nine of The Voice of Doom on The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics Magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time. Watch for the Superman adventure serial soon to be shown at your local movie theater. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with amazing physical powers far beyond those of mortal men, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, wages a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Today, as all trace of Butcher Stark is lost, Superman faces a deadly sound projector in the mountain laboratory and makes a startling request. Mr. Johnson, I want you to bombard me with sound. What did you say, Superman? I want you to bombard me with sound from this projector. Sound in the high frequencies, as strong as possible. But look I here. want you to keep hitting me with it until I either learn to take it or I fold. That's the only way I can arm myself to face Butcher Stark. Adventures of Superman. After the murder of a former racketeer and the sudden startling robbery of the Metropolis National Bank, Superman learned that Butcher Stark, the escaped convict and ruthless killer, was using the deadly sonic power of his voice in a reckless outburst of crime, personally directed by someone who knew how to use his power to best advantage, one of Superman's most dangerous enemies, the Scarlet Widow. Now, after the failure of his second attempt to capture Stark, we find the Man of Steel in his guise of Clark Kent in the office of the Daily Planet, still trying to persuade Mayor Perry White of the danger in Stark's voice. Oh, look, Chief, you saw the wall of the bank, how it simply collapsed with no signs of any kind of explosion. Yes, yes, I saw and it. And you heard the statements of all the witnesses, that they all were conscious of a strange, penetrating sound, a sound that made their ears yes, hurt. Yes, yes, I know all that. Well, but I won't swallow your theory that it's done with a man's oh. voice. Chief, 
Oh, oh, hello, Lois. What kind of a story is this? Huh? What story? Here, look. The press room sent it up for a verification. It's fantastic. Oh, hello, Clark. I didn't see That's you. That's okay. And, Chief, you don't have to bother reading that clip. I wrote the story. It's about Butcher Stark. What? You wrote that, that, uh, dime novel thriller? Great jumping, Jay Hossifat. I've got to stop this. No. Uh, hello. Chief, get me the press Chief, call. you're not going to kill him. I certainly am. But you're suppressing the facts. Well, I'm not. I'm holding them until they can be verified. Hello, oh. Carlson. Clark, well, well, I'm not sure. Well, I'm not sure. Well, I'm not I didn't dream it up, Lois. Yeah. It's the absolute well, it truth. Well, it doesn't sound like that. Now, look, Chief, I'm getting a little tired of being pushed around like this. Oh, you are, are you? Yes, it's about time you were shown a thing or two. About Butcher Stark's so called voice of doom? That's right. Now, I can't let you hear his voice, but I can show you the power of sound. You got anything to do this afternoon? Mm, very interesting. And how do you plan to demonstrate same? I'm going to take you up to the sonic laboratory in the mountains to show you a couple of things. Hey, you're not going to leave me out of this. I certainly am not. It'll be a pleasure to show both of you. Come on. <laughs> Mr. Johnson, I've brought Mayor White and Miss Lane up here to show them exactly what the power of sound can do. Will you help me by demonstrating for them? Why, yes, of course. Thank you. I'd appreciate it very much. So would I. The subject fascinates me. Well, shall we... Oh, excuse me. Yes, of course. Hello? He seems like oh. a very nice fellow, doesn't he, Carl? He is. Uh, exactly uh, what does he do here, Kent? He's the lab technician. Yes, he operates the equipment sure, for the scientists. Oh, I see. Oh, Kent? Yes? For you, it's Bruce Wayne. Oh, thanks. Excuse me, Lois, Chief. Mm -hmm. Sure, sir. Oh, uh, well, why don't you all go ahead into the laboratory? I'll join you there. Good idea. Miss Lane, Mayor White, if you'll follow me, I'll yes, show I you... Yes, I will. Come on, John. Clark, you're about as easy to find as a needle in a haystack. What are you doing up there? I'm trying to prove the power of sound to the Chief and Lois, a couple of doubting Thomases. Well, good luck. Thanks. Anything new? No, I've drawn a blank. Oh? I've been out in the bat plane since last night, checking every possible field that Stark and the Scarlet Widow might have landed at. There's no traces. They're not within 500 miles of Metropolis at any rate. I see. Also, I've contacted Robin in Chicago and told him to nose around that area, see if he could pick up anything. That's a good idea. Well, have you got any other ideas? No, not at the moment. Why don't you come up here and meet me? We can talk it over together. All right. Luckily, I'm not too far away. I'll be there in about an hour and a half. Good. See you then. <laughs> noise you hear isn't the sound we're going to demonstrate, Mayor White. It's just a mechanical hum from the power equipment. I see. Well, if the sound is as deadly as Clark says, should we be in the same room with it? Oh, it's all right, Miss Lane. You won't hear it at all. But we'll have to wear these helmets. Oh, what? I see. Oh. Sorry I took so long. Have I missed anything? No, Miss Kent. We're just about ready to begin. Oh, oh uh, here's a helmet for you. Helmet? Yes, to protect your ears. You'll be able to hear voices and ordinary sound, but the higher frequencies, the dangerous ones, are filtered out. Now, uh... Are we ready? Uh, just a minute. Let me get this thing on right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, all right. Now, over there against that wall, you see I've grouped a number of objects. Uh -huh. We'll deal with the pile of bottles on the left first. Uh, uh, what is this machine? It's a sound projector, Miss Lane. Seems the sounds do just the spot I want. Ready now. Watch the bottles. I don't see anything happening. Wait. Chief. There. The bottle's broken. Well, I'll be... Shattered into a hundred little pieces. So much for glass. Why? Now, that wooden block in the center. Watch it. Great Caesar. Why, why the whole block is just, just killing wood. Mm, interesting. Certainly is, Johnson. Show them more. We'll try that paving block over there on the left. Now, watch it closely. Mm, if anything happens to stone, why, then I'll... Keep your eyes on it, Chief. I can't believe it. Well, Chief, is that demonstration sufficient to prove the power of sound? Well... It is for me. I've never seen anything like it in my whole life. I'm convinced that sound can break solid objects and even kill people, but... But I still don't believe that Stark can do it with his voice. Oh, not again. Mayor White, I was here when Stark was hit by lightning. I heard him myself. And I swear to you, he carries the power of sound in his voice. Great Good Caesar. heavens. Well, Chief? All right, Kent, you win. I'll have to believe it. Me too, Clark. I take back all I said. Okay. Now that you both realize how deadly he is, now how do we get him? It seems impossible. Yes. Can you help us, Johnson? I'm afraid not, Mayor White. Until man can learn to withstand sound such as Stark can produce, it's impossible. Can learn to withstand sound. Learn to withstand... Great Scott, that's it! That's what? Now I know how we can get Stark. The only way we can get him. <laughs> Struck with a sudden idea, Kent strides quickly over to the sound projector, then rubs his hands in satisfaction as Lois, Perry White, and Johnson stare at him in amazement. What does Kent plan to do? We'll find out in just a moment, gang, so keep listening. <laughs> Back 
to the adventures of Superman. <laughs> After witnessing an amazing demonstration of the power of sound in the mountain laboratory, Clark Kent suddenly leaped as though stung. I've got it. Now I know how we can lick Butcher Stark. What? How, Clark? Uh, I, I can't tell you now, Lois. Well, why not? I've got to be sure it works first, Chief. Come on, I'll take you back to Metropolis. Then I can go to work on my idea. <laughs> Kent didn't leave a message for me, Carl. He told me to meet him here. Honestly, Bruce, I've never seen a man behave so strangely. Well, what do you mean? He shouted something about an idea of how to get Stark. Then he rushed Mayor White and Lois Lane out of here. Hardly gave them a chance to say goodbye. That's funny. I wonder what I'm supposed to do now. Well, I... You do nothing, Bruce, but stand by and watch. What the... Superman! Well, how... how what? I'll have to apologize for my friend Kent, Mr. Johnson, but he was pretty wild about his idea and wanted to get to work on it right away. Well, of course, but... Where is he? Well, uh, he sent me here in his place, figuring I'd be the best one for the job he had in mind. Well, what did you have in mind? It was his idea, Bruce. Oh, yeah, yes, of course. Well, what is it? The idea is for Mr. Johnson to bombard me with sound. What? Give us that again. Johnson is to bombard me with sound from that projector. Keep hitting me with it until I can take it. Then I'll be ready to meet Stark on his own ground. Holy smoke. But, but that's impossible, Superman, even for you. Why? I don't know Stark's range. If that projector reaches an impossible volume of sound, it could conceivably blast every living thing off this earth. Nevertheless, I want to try it. Beginning right now. His blue steel eyes blazing with determination, Superman makes a dangerous decision, despite the fact that he well remembers his two encounters with Butcher Stark's power. Mr. Johnson says the laboratory projector is many times stronger. What effect will this test have on the Man of Steel? Gang, you won't want to miss tomorrow's suspense-packed episode, so don't fail to listen. Same time, same station, for Chapter 10 of The Voice of Doom on The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics Magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time. Watch for the adventure, uh, the Superman adventure serial soon to be shown at your local movie theater. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. <laughs> It's Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with amazing physical powers far beyond those of mortal men, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, wages a never-ending battle for truth and justice. <laughs> Today, Superman, in an effort to arm himself against the sonic power of Butcher Stark's voice, prepares to undergo a series of dangerous tests in which he will pit his might against the overwhelming force of sound. All right, Johnson, I'm ready. Are you, are you sure you want to go through with this, Superman? Of course I'm sure. But you know what happened when you came up against the sonic power in Stark's voice? This projector is a hundred times stronger. I know what I'm doing, Johnson. If I can learn to stand up against the projector, I can meet Stark on his own ground. So go on, turn on the power. Give it to me wide open. And now, the adventures of Superman. Now at large, after escaping from Superman a second time, Butcher Stark, the ruthless killer with the deadly power of sound in his voice, is a constant threat to law and order especially since his alliance with the Scarlet Widow, which has created one of the most formidable criminal partnerships ever known. Realizing his only hope of ever defeating Stark lies in overcoming the power of his voice, Superman has decided on an exhaustive series of tests, pitting his might against the destructive force of ultra-high-frequency sound. And to that end, we find him now with Bruce Wayne, the famous Batman, in the sonic laboratory in the mountains. Speaking quickly, the Man of Steel outlines his plan to Carl Johnson, the laboratory technician. 
As I understand it, Johnson, your sound projector is a hundred times more powerful than Butcher Stark's voice. Is that right? Yes, Superman, it is. All right, then. If I can learn how to take that amount of sound, dealing with Stark will be a picnic in comparison. But, but what if you can't take it, Superman? That's what we're going to find out right now. No, if anything happened to you, I'd, I'd feel like a murderer. Listen, Johnson, if we don't do anything to put an end to Stark's power, we'll all be murderers. So let's not argue about it anymore. We've got work to do. I know, He's but... He's right, I... Carl. Go on, help him. All right. But I'd rather do it outside. Outside? What difference does it make? Well, it's for Superman's own protection. Now, wait a minute. I don't want to... I'm sorry. If I'm going to do this, you'll have to let me do it my own way. Well, all right, but I still don't see why we have... If something should go wrong, if you find you can't absorb the sound, you'll be trapped in the room. You won't be able to get away from it. Why not? Well, you can always turn off the projector, can't you? Yes, yes, but I can't control the afterimage. The what? The afterimage. It's sort of an echo that reverberates in the room for some time after the projector has been turned off. And it may be just enough to injure Superman. I see. But outside, that echo is diffused, is that it? Yes, there's nothing to confine it out there. So it scatters almost immediately. Isn't there any danger of harming someone outside? Oh, we're pretty well isolated out here. It'll be quite safe, I assure you. Well, all right, let's go. Oh, wait, we'll have to get this projector out on the roof of the lab. And it won't be an easy job. It weighs almost half a ton. Oh, don't let that worry you. What do you mean? You forget, Johnson. This man is Superman. Oh, yes, of course. Now, just tell me what is to be moved where, and we'll be ready to go to work in no time. Well, Johnson, all set now? Almost, Superman. Now, look, Superman, you sure you want to go through with this? Let's not start that again, Bruce. Okay, okay. And suppose you do get through it all right. Suppose you learn how to withstand the power of Stark's voice. Then what? Then we start looking for him. Look for him? (laughs) For all the news we've had about him, he might just as well have fallen down a well somewhere. Don't you worry. We'll pick up his trail sooner or later. Don't forget, the Scarlet Widow is too smart to be satisfied with a simple bank robbery. She knows she's got something in Stark, and she's going to make the most of it. No doubt. You know, I can hardly believe she's back. I thought she was dead. Yeah, I thought so, too. Seeing her there in the airport really threw me off stride. Gave Stark his chance to overcome me. I shouldn't wonder. All right, Superman, I'm ready. Good. Go on, Bruce. You better get back there with Johnson. Okay. Good luck. Thanks. And cheer up, will you? You're not going to a funeral. Well, I I certainly hope not. Your helmet tight, Bruce? Yes, but why do I have to wear it out here, Carl? You're beaming the sound away from us, aren't you? Yes, but I'm not taking any chances. How about it over there? Okay, Superman. Here goes. Hey, what's the matter with the projector? I don't hear anything. Oh, this sound is way above the range of the human ear. But Superman feels it. Look at him. Great Scott, he's reeling. Shut it off, Carl, shut it off. No, wait. He's recovering. There, look at him. He's walking right into the sound, literally holding back the sound waves with his hands. Great gun. All right. This is too easy. What are you doing, Johnson? Kidding me? No, just working up by degrees. Stand by now. Here comes more. Oh, Johnson, you've knocked him off his feet. Yes. But look, he's fighting back. Yeah. He's still in trouble. Look at him weave around. The pressure seems to be affecting his sense of balance. He's certainly a glutton for punishment, Bruce. He always was. Look, Johnson, he's not weaving around as much now. No, he's straightening out. I think he's licked it. Yeah, but this is only half the power. Well, that's enough. Turn it off again. Hey, what's the idea? You proved your point. No sense going on with this. Johnson, did you use full power? Well, he used enough. Did you, Johnson? No, I only used half. And the test isn't finished. Give it to me again. And this time, open up all the way. Look, be reasonable, will Are you? Are you ready, Johnson? Oh, wait, Superman. I don't think we can continue the test. Why not? Well, look at the ground all around you. What about it? Even using half the power, we've killed every blade of grass and weed oh. and opened cracks in the ground. I'm afraid the power of sound might start a landslide. Hey, I never thought of that. We can take care of that very easily. Up! Up! Can you reach me up here, Johnson? Well, yes, but I... All right, then, let's go. Okay, if you insist. I want full power. Open your sound projector all the way. Anything you say, stand by. Keep your fingers crossed, Bruce. Or rather, I've got them crossed so tight they ache. Here goes. Let her come. Watch him closely, Bruce. I am. Hey, say, it isn't having any effect on him. How come? What's going on down there? The projector isn't aimed right. Wait a minute. Now. There. That should do it all right. Good Lord, he's falling. No, no. He he hit the ground and he isn't moving. Horrified Bruce Wayne of Johnson's stands frozen. The man of steel lies still on the ground before them. His red cape twisted and crumpled around him. Has Superman finally succumbed to a power greater than his own? A force even stronger than kryptonite? We'll know in a moment, gang, so keep listening. And now, back to 
the adventures of Superman. <laughs> Testing himself against the power of sound in order to meet Butcher Stark on equal terms, Superman was hit by a sonic wave containing the full strength of the projector. And before the horrified eyes of Bruce Wayne and Carl Johnson plummeted helplessly earthward. Superman, are you all right? Yes, but... Ah, you really threw the book at me that time, didn't you? Well, you, you yeah. asked for full power. Yes, I know I did. Ah. Well, all right, let's try it again. No, you can't. You've had enough. Let I... me be the judge of that, Bruce. Go on now, Johnson. Get back to that projector. We'll try it again. Stand by, Superman. We're ready. Fine. Keep the beam steady. I'm going to try watching it this time. All right. Be careful, will you? Don't worry. Turn it up. Here it comes. And here he comes. <laughs> What happened? I didn't feel a thing. I don't know. The projector is on. Then keep it on. I'll go out and try it again. Up! Up! And away! Hey, Scott, look at him. Travel. He's turning now. Coming back. Watch him. Still don't get any reaction. Why? I don't understand it. The sound waves are going out full strength. Wait a minute. I think I've got it, Superman. What? Look, your speed, it's the speed of light. Yes? As you rush through the air toward the projector, your speed probably sets up a shock wave which overpowers and dissipates the sound wave. Right, Scott. You may be right. The sound waves haven't had a chance to reach well, you. Well, I'll be... You've done it, Superman. That's the answer. Yes, so it seems. But now we need the answer to another question. Where do we find Butcher Stark? And as Superman ponders his next move, the answer is being supplied at this moment by a news service bulletin being teletyped all over the country. <laughs> For immediate release, all newspapers, Chicago, July 20th. The bodies of two racketeers were found in a wrecked car on the lake shore. Although the car was a total loss, there was no evidence of a crash or explosion, and the causes of death are still a mystery. In addition, a boy, identified by papers in his possession as Dick Grayson, was found unconscious some distance from the car and is now in the city hospital in serious condition. So Butcher Stark and the Scarlet Widow have made their next move. And Dick Grayson, who is Robin, Batman's young friend and partner, is one of their victims. What will happen now? Gang Superman really goes into action tomorrow, so don't fail to listen. Tune in tomorrow, same time, same station, for Chapter 11 of The Voice of Doom on The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time. Watch for the Superman adventure serial soon to be shown at your local movie theater. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. <laughs> It's Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with amazing physical powers far beyond those of mortal men, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, wages a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Today, as Superman, in his guise of Clark Kent, searches for a lead to Butcher Stark's whereabouts, he receives a clue and a warning of trouble for young Robin. Listen to this, Kent. I think we've got something. What is it, Chief? A bulletin from our press service in Chicago. Oh? It says two men were found dead in a wrecked car, but the car wasn't in the smash-up. What? Let me see that. Here. Uh, you think it may be Stark? Well, it certainly looks as if... Hey, what's this? A young boy was found unconscious near the wreck... Great Scott! Dick Grayson! <laughs> Adventures of Superman. In order to meet the ruthless killer, Butcher Stark, and withstand the deadly sonic power of his voice, Superman underwent a series of rigorous tests at the sonic laboratory in the mountains, where he pitted his might against the overwhelming power of sound. The result was as unexpected as it was revealing, for the Man of Steel discovered within himself the perfect defense against Stark, a defense based on his unbelievable speed, which he learned sets up a wall of resistance to the deadly sonic power. Now we find Superman in his guise of Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter, back in the offices of the Daily Planet, where, with editor Perry White, 
He checks police reports from all over the country in an effort to find a trace of Butcher Stark and the Scarlet Widow. Well, I don't know how you feel about it, Kent. But as far as I'm concerned, these reports don't tell us a thing. No, afraid I have to agree with you, Chief. It seems as if every town constable and village sheriff has seen somebody, but not the man we want. Yeah, I know. Well, he's got to be somewhere. He couldn't just vanish. Well, maybe he's holed up and is waiting until things cool off. No, he's been in jail a long time, Chief. I doubt if he has the patience to wait. Besides, he must feel pretty sure of himself with that sonic power of his. Well, we'll just have to keep throwing out feelers for him. On the police of other cities until they turn up something. Yeah, I know, but in the meantime, someone may suffer. Stark may I cut know, loose again. I know, I know, but it can't be helped. No, your phone. Maybe it's more news. Yeah. Where are you, Ice Bee? Who? Oh, just a minute. Uh, it's for you, Ken. It's Bruce Wayne. Oh, thanks. Hello, Bruce. Clark, I'm awfully worried. Why? What's up? Well, you know Robin is visiting in Chicago, don't you? Yes. Well, when I got home last night after the test we ran up at the Sonic Laboratory, I found a wire from him saying he was on the trail of something hot. And would try to phone me later in the evening. Oh, swell. Well, why should that upset you? Because he didn't call. I waited until after midnight, then I tried to reach him. And? I couldn't get a hold of him. I called his hotel, I called his friends, and nobody knew where he was. Hmm. Did, did you try again this morning? Yes, and learned that he wasn't at his hotel all night. Uh-oh. The key to his room was never picked up, and he didn't get any of the messages I left for him. I see. Clark, you know I told him about Butcher Stark and asked him to keep an eye open for him. Yes, I know. But I'm afraid he may have got into trouble. Oh, now, look, I wouldn't jump to conclusions, Bruce. But hang it all, where is he? Well, look, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll ask Perry White to contact the police commissioner in Chicago. Oh, what's that? Just a minute, Chief. And then they can be on the lookout for him, and we no, can... No, wait, wait. It'd be kind of silly to start a mess like that if Robin was really all right. Oh, don't you worry about that. They'll do it on the QT as a favor to the Chief. Oh, look here, Kent. What are you getting me into? I'll explain in a minute, Chief. Okay, Bruce? Well, all right. But if I don't hear anything by tonight, I'm going out there myself. Fine. Now, just you relax. I'll call you later. Thanks, Clark. So long. So long. No, what's this all about? Bruce is afraid something happened to his young friend, Rob... Uh, I mean, Dick Grayson. You see, the, the boy's in Chicago, and Bruce hasn't been able to get hold of him. Oh, I Look, see. Chief, uh, do me a favor and wire the commissioner there, will you? And ask him to have his men look at yeah, hold it, Kent, hold it. Uh, come in. Mr. White. Oh, I am Mr. Kent. Hello, Beanie. Now, what do you want? Miss Lane asked me to give you this. Well, what is it? It's a report from the Chicago office. Just came off the press teletype. She thought you'd want to see it. Oh, thanks. What does it say, Chief? The bodies of two racketeers were found in a wrecked car on the lake shore. Although the car was a total loss, there was no evidence of a crash or explosion, and the causes of death are still a mystery. Great Scott. Do you think it might be... Now, wait, wait. There's more. In addition, a boy, identified by papers in his possession as Dick Grayson... Dick was Grayson? ...some distance from the car and is now in city hospital in serious condition. So that's what happened to Dick. Well, that's Wayne's young friend, isn't it? Yes. Now, you think he tangled with Butcher Stark? He must have. Chief, please get hold of Inspector Henderson right away. Tell him to get all the details from the Chicago police and then call me at Bruce Wayne's apartment. Hurry, please. Are you sure, Clark? Maybe it's a mistake. Oh, I'm afraid not. The way it stacks up now, Robin must have picked up Stark's trail somehow and got mixed up in some job Stark was doing. Why would the young fool want to tangle with Stark? Well, I don't think he did. Or he wouldn't be alive now. Stark was apparently after the two men who were found dead, and Robin got too close, so... Oh, I'll take it if you don't mind, Bruce. It may be the chief. Right. Hello. Kent? Yes, Chief. Henderson know anything? He called Chicago and checked for me. Yes? Autopsies on the two men revealed that they were subjected to some unbearable pressure. That clinches it, then. It was Stark. Yes. What about the boy? Uh, he's in pretty bad shape, I'm afraid. Oh? You'd better tell Wayne to get out there as fast as he can. Oh. Uh, why All right. will be back at the office? Uh, I don't know. What? I'm going to Chicago with Bruce. Now, wait a minute. I'll see you when I get back, Chief. You can't do this to me! So long. Clark, what did he say about Robin? Well, he, he didn't know too much, Bruce, so we're going to have to find out for ourselves. Well, when can you leave? Right now. Good. Get set to go by Superman Express. Off with these clothes. Why was I can get you there in no time as Superman. Thanks, Clark. There we are. Now, you set? Check. All right. Up with this window. Hang on now. Right. Next stop, Robin's bedside at the hospital. Up! Up! And away! <laughs> say you are young Grayson's guardian, Mr. Wayne. Yes, Doctor. Dick's lived with me ever since he was orphaned. I see. How is the boy, Doctor? Well, I, I don't know quite how to tell you. What do you mean? Well, will he... Will he... Mr. Wayne, I'm afraid you've arrived too late. Oh, no. Are you sure, Doctor? Isn't there something... I'm sorry, Superman. Nothing short of a miracle can save the boy's life now. He's beyond human help. Sympathetic, but apparently helpless. The kindly Doctor somberly pronounces a grim verdict. While Superman and his friend Batman stand by the side of a hospital bed on which lies the still rigid figure of young Dick Grayson, better known as Robin. Is there really nothing that can be done for him? We'll know more in a moment. <laughs> 
when we return for the gripping climax of today's episode. So keep listening. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. Stunned by the doctor's pronouncement of Robin's grave condition, Batman stands at the boy's bedside, grief-stricken, as Superman questions the doctor. But what is it? What's wrong with him? He suffered a great physical shock, Superman. A traumatic condition. It seems to be impossible to rouse him. But, Doctor, have you tried everything? Everything, Mr. Wayne. From plasma to every known drug, and it's had no effect. There must be something else. There must be. Easy, Bruce, easy. Look, Doctor, isn't it possible to counteract a shock such as he suffered by administering another shock? Yes, and that's the only thing we haven't tried yet, because... Well, it should be done with electricity, but I'm afraid the boy couldn't stand it. His heart might fail. Well, uh, what about... What about extreme cold? No, we've tried that. Ice baths don't help. I'm not thinking of ice baths, Doctor. Listen, will you let me try to revive him? You? But what can you do? I can give him a shock comparable to the one he received by carrying him up to the sub-freezing temperatures of the stratosphere. But he he couldn't breathe up there. He'll only be up there for a few seconds. How about it? Do you think it might work? Well, it might do it, but I'm in no position to permit it. It's not up to me to gamble with the boy's life. What do you say, Bruce? You're his legal guardian. Will you trust me to help him? Well, I... I... Can you help him, Superman? I think so. But it's a gamble. Well, if you think so, it's no gamble. Go ahead. All right, come on, Dick. Hold on, like this. Well, just what are you going to do with him? What I told the doctor. Give him a shock to match the one he received. Okay, stand by. We'll be back soon. Very well. Take care of him, Superman. You know I will, Bruce. Out! Up! And away! <laughs> Robin tenderly in his arms, Superman rockets into the sky, forging thousands of feet upward with every powerful thrust of his legs. The air grows thin and cold, bitterly cold, and the man of steel watches Robin's face closely. Come on, boy. Come on, snap out of it. The precious seconds pass quickly and there is no reaction. Robin's face is still pale and set. But then, as Superman wheels up through the frigid stratosphere, there is a sudden change. The boy's lips turn blue. His chest labors painfully as he fights for life-giving oxygen. But his eyes remain closed. Has Superman taken too much of a chance? Has he gambled with Robin's life only to lose? We'll find out in tomorrow's action-packed episode, gang, so don't miss it. Tune in tomorrow, same time, same station, for Chapter 12 of The Voice of Doom on The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time. Watch for the Superman adventure serial soon to be shown at your local movie theater. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with amazing physical powers far beyond those of mortal men, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, wages a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Today, Superman carries young Dick Grayson through the substratosphere in a desperate attempt to save the boy's life. And Bruce Wayne, who is the famous Batman, is with a doctor, watching anxiously from a hospital window as they wait for the return of the Man of Steel. Can you see them, Doctor? No, they're out of sight. Probably up in the stratosphere by now. Oh, how I hope Superman's stunt works. So do I, Mr. Wayne, but he's taking a desperate chance. I admit the sub-freezing temperatures of the stratosphere may revive the boy, but at the same time, he can't breathe in that thin air. Superman knows what he's doing. I trust him. Of course. Now, wait, wait, wait. I see them. Where? They're coming out of that cloud. Oh, yes. I wonder if... Great guns! What's the matter? That's... That's Dick coming down alone. He's... He's falling out of the sky! And now... The Adventures of Superman! 
Armed with the knowledge that his speed, the speed of light, would equalize the deadly sonic power of Butcher Stark's voice, Superman and his guys of Clark Kent began the difficult task of tracing the killer and his accomplice, the Scarlet Widow. And the first indication of their whereabouts came in a news release from Chicago, reporting the mysterious death of two notorious underworld characters. But Kent's satisfaction was dampened by the additional news that Dick Grayson, Batman's young companion Robin, was found near the scene of the crime, unconscious. Resuming his true identity, the Man of Steel rocketed to Chicago with Batman, and there found Robin in a city hospital, his condition grave. Superman went into immediate action. <laughs> Holding the unconscious boy tenderly in his arms, he soared into the sky, reaching for the sub-freezing temperatures of the stratosphere in the hope that the intense cold would supply the severe shock necessary to bring Dick out of it. <laughs> Circling in the thin, airless atmosphere as though impossible of sustaining human life, Superman watches the boy's drawn, pale face carefully, hoping, praying for a change. <laughs> Come on, Dick. Come on, boy, snap out of it. You've got to snap out of it. Then there is a change, but not the one hoped for. Young Grayson's lips and cheeks turn blue, and his chest labors painfully. Even though unconscious, he instinctively fights for his life, fighting for oxygen that is not to be had. Dick. Dick, can you hear me? Great Scott, he needs air, but he's still unconscious. I can't keep him up here another second, but I haven't given him the shock he needs. Well, there's only one thing I can do now. Here you go, boy. Pausing in flight, Superman suddenly opens his arms and the boy tumbles headlong through the air, falling toward the earth miles below. Curling down in tight circles around the plummeting body of the boy known as Robin, Superman maintains his anxious watch, searching for the first sign of the youngster's regaining consciousness as he falls to within 30,000 feet of the earth. Then 10,000, 5,000, now barely 1,000 feet from the ground, Superman detects a change, a change for the better. Color floods the boy's cheeks, the color of life. With renewed hope, the man of steel scoops the boy into his arms and carries him back to the hospital where Bruce Wayne and the doctor wait. Anxious questions crowding their lips. Superman. Let me see right? the boy quickly. Yes, Bruce, he's all right. I think we've done it, doctor. Here, I'll, I'll put him on the bed. Quickly, ring for a nurse. Okay, but will he be? See, doctor, he's breathing normally. There's, there's color in his cheeks. Yes, yes, I see. There may be a chance. Now, if you gentlemen will please wait outside. We should know the answer in a very short while. <laughs> Taking that doctor so long. Wait a minute, Bruce. Coming out now. Please, Lord, please make Robin well. Well, doctor? You may go in now, gentlemen. Does, does that mean? It means everything will be all right. Oh, thank heaven. The boy is conscious and he will recover. <laughs> So help me, Bruce. I never heard anything like it in my life. The sound cut through me like a sword. I thought my head was going to split wide open. I'll bet that was Butcher Stark, all right. Well, how do you feel now, Dick? You feel well enough to talk? Oh, sure. Then let's have the story, huh? From the beginning. Okay, here it is. After Batman called me from Metropolis and asked me to nose around, I began checking all the local airports. Uh huh. Not only the ones close to the city, but the small airstrips 50 and 60 miles out. Good boy. I was lucky. The plane you described came in the night before at a small field and landed because something was wrong with the engine. What a break that was. And how? Well, there were three people on the plane. Three people? Uh-huh. Two men and a woman. And they didn't wait to see the plane repaired. They took a cab all the way into Chicago, saying they'd be back in a couple of days. Did you trace the cab? Oh, sure, it was easy. They went to a pool room in the stockyard area of the city. A hangout for some pretty crummy characters. I wonder where Stark and the Scarlet Widow picked up the other man. And what for? Oh, probably someone the Scarlet Widow knew, a man who could fly a plane. Oh, I get it. Well, what did you learn in the pool room, Dick? Well, yesterday evening, things seemed ready to pop. I waited and watched. Fellas were walking in and out of a back room, and I figured some big shot was holding a meeting there. I tried to get in myself, but I couldn't. Hey, that was dangerous. And then two men came out. One of them was the boss, I think. The real big wig, the way everybody spoke to him. Yeah. And he and his friend looked like they were up to something. So I decided to tag along. Well, how did you do that? Oh, you know, the old trick. I ducked out ahead of them and hid in the trunk of their car. Oh, you sure take chances, son. And how? Well, I figured it was worth it. Anyhow, they drove to a spot on the lake shore and parked. I waited a couple of minutes, and then I ducked out of the trunk to see what was happening. And boy, did I get an eyeful. What did you see? They were waiting to give someone a royal reception. Huh? With submachine guns. Uh-oh. I decided that things were going to get a little too hot. So I moved out. I waited about 50 feet away. I'm glad you used your head that time. <laughs> Thanks again. About two minutes later, another car came down the shore drive and pulled up 100 feet away from the car I'd left. 
It was dark, but I could just make out the outlines of two people in the front seat. Stark and the Scarlet Widow. It was too dark to be sure. Anyhow, one of them got out and walked over to my pals. And the next thing I know, wow, that awful noise. And I guess I folded for a nice long nap. Brother, you don't know how long that nap might have been. Listen, Dick. Do you remember where that pool room is? Sure, I'll take you there. You'll do no such thing. You're staying put, young man. Oh, now, wait a minute. Bruce is right. You've done enough. Oh, why cut me out when things are just starting to get exciting? It won't be so exciting. This will be just routine. Now, where is it? Come on, give. Well, the place is called the Ace Billiard Academy on Fremont Street. Right. You ready, Bruce? Ready, willing, and able. Okay, let's go. Come on, out through this window. Up! Up! And away! There are the stockyards, Batman. Yeah, we must be close. We are. Fremont Street is over to the left. Hold tight. Hey, hey, don't cut your corner so sharp. <laughs> Sorry. There, that's Fremont Street. Now, the Ace Billiard... Hey, what's going on? Huh? That crowd standing around in the street. Yeah, something's happened down there. Look, police cars, an ambulance, people being carried out in stretchers. That man, we're too late. What? Look at the front of that building. It's shattered. Butcher Stark and the Scarlet Widow have beaten us to it again. Swooping low over Fremont Street, Superman and Batman stare with gloomy eyes at the shattered exterior of the pool room, which gives mute but clear evidence of Butcher Stark's presence. What will Superman do now? Will he be able to pick up the trail again? We'll find out in just a moment, gang. So keep listening. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. With an important source of information cut off by Butcher Stark's destructive power... Superman and Batman are now on their way to the small airstrip on the outskirts of Chicago where they hope to pick up the trail of the killer. Think we can make the airfield in time? We'll know soon enough, Batman. We're almost there. Good. You know, I'm still trying to figure out why in the world Stark blasted that pool room. The cover is tracks, I suppose. Now, if we don't catch up to him at the airport, we'll have to start looking all over again. And it'll mean the lives of more people. Hey, hey, there's an airport. Is that... Yep, that's the one we want. Hang on. Down! Down! <laughs> Well, you recognize the plane? Wait, uh, let's, let's look around here. Well, what about that ship down there, near the hangar? No, that's not it. And it's not in the hangar either. Well, then what? They're gone, Batman. Oh, no. Yes. Now we have to start from scratch again. Do the whole job all over. Crestfallen, the man of steel and his friend Batman stand on the airport runway, momentarily confused and unable to plan a clear course of action. Like grim will-o'-the-wisps, Butcher Stark and the Scarlet Widow strike and disappear, their next port of call unknown. Can Superman catch up to them? There's plenty of action and excitement in our next gripping episode, gang, so be sure to listen. Same time, same station, for Chapter 13 of The Voice of Doom on The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics Magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time. Watch for the Superman Adventure Serial soon to be shown at your local movie theater. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with amazing physical powers far beyond those of mortal men, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, wages a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Today, as once again Butcher Stark, the ruthless killer who possesses deadly sonic power, and his accomplice, the Scarlet Widow, strike and vanish... Superman and Batman come to a frightening realization. Batman, do you realize that this is the sixth time we've missed them? The sixth time. This was just a bad break, Superman. Another few minutes one way or the other, and we would have had them. Yeah. We'll be Johnny on the spot the next move they make. We can't wait for the next move. 
If we wait for Stark and the Widow to strike again, more lives may be lost. We've got to hit them first. We've got to find them and wipe them out. And now, the adventures of Superman. Once again, resuming his guise of Clark Kent, Superman has begun the difficult task of tracing Butcher Stark, the escaped convict, whose voice contains the fearsome power of sound. <laughs> Leaving Batman to question the manager of the small airport just outside of Chicago, from which the killer and his accomplice, the Scarlet Widow, took off for parts unknown, Kent raced back to the city, hoping to pick up a clue from one of the victims of Stark's power. Now we join the mild-mannered reporter in Central Police Headquarters, where he is introduced to a small, frightened-looking, yellow-haired man by Captain Gray, head of the Detective Bureau. Who is this, Captain Gray? This is Blonde Louie, Kent. The only man who was in that pool parlor who was able to talk right now. Huh? What do you want with me? I don't I know. just want to ask you a few questions, Louie. For instance, what happened over at the pool hall? I don't know. I don't know. Like I already told the captain, I'm in the back room minding my own business, and all of a sudden I hear a funny noise. Uh-huh. And I feel like my brains is coming out of my ears, and, and that's all I remember. How do you like that, eh, Kent? He wants us to believe he heard a funny noise and he passed out. If that isn't one for the books. No. He's telling the truth, Captain Gray. Huh? What are you giving me, Kent? The facts. And it only takes a call to Inspector Henderson of the Metropolis Police to verify them. That's why I'm in Chicago now. Well, I, I never heard such a story in all my life. Look, you've heard of Butcher Stark, haven't you? Sure, we're on the lookout for him here. Well, you just missed him. Because he was the cause of that blast at the pool room. And the deaths of those two racketeers you found on the lake shore yesterday. Now, look here, Kent. How could Stark... I'll tell you about it later, Captain. Louis, uh, you said you were in the back room of the pool hall when it happened. That makes you a pretty important fellow, doesn't it? <laughs> I, I don't know what you're getting at. That's the stalling, Louie. You were in pretty solid with Bailey. He's the big shot, Kent, or was. Oh, one of the men found dead in the car? Right. Well, then, Louie, you probably know why Bailey was parked in that car, waiting in ambush. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Don't give us that. Come on, spill it. You must know why there was so much activity around the pool hall yesterday, why everybody seemed so worried. You must know, too, why Bailey went out with one of his thugs to kill someone. No, I, I don't know nothing. I... I just hang around the pool hall. That's Listen, all. Louis. Eight men were carried out of that place this morning, and out of the eight, you are the only one who's up on his feet. Five are dead, and two others in serious condition. Funny you should be okay, isn't it? I didn't have nothing to do with it, I swear it. I passed out. I, I don't know what happened. All right, skip that. I don't care what happened this morning. What I want to know is what went on yesterday. I I don't know. Bailey had a visitor, didn't he? Two visitors, in fact. A man and a woman, right? How, how did you know? Never mind. You recognized one of them, didn't you? The man. He'd been around there before, isn't that so? Look, mister, I, I don't want to get no that trouble. That man was Butcher Stark, wasn't it? I, I... Answer the question. Wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was the butcher. And there was a woman with him? Yeah, yeah, but I don't know her. Honest, I don't. Never mind. What were they doing there? Well, they was trying to cut in. The dame had the brass to say she was taken over. What? Yeah. She said she was taken over not only from Bailey, but from all the mobs in the city. She was going to run the work, she said. Now, who could that be? That's the Scarlet Widow. What did Bailey say, Louie? He wanted to pitch her out of the office, but then... Well, then Butcher did something. I don't know what. I wasn't around, but the other guy said Bailey fell on the floor holding his head. Butcher didn't even touch him. What is this? Go on, Louie. What happened then? Well, I heard they... They made a date to get together and talk things over. Yes? But Bailey wasn't going to talk. He took along a chatter gun and... Well, that's all we ever heard from him. Didn't you hear from the woman? Or Stark? Yeah. Yeah, late last night, after Bailey was rubbed out, they come back and said they meant business and for everybody to be around in the morning. And I suppose you all tried to throw them out. I, I guess so, but I, I wasn't in on it. I, I was in the back room. Okay, Louie, thanks. That's all I want to know. And uh, thank you for your courtesy, Captain Gray. Just a minute, Kent. You seem to know a lot more about this than I do. Yes, but you'll probably get a lot more information from Inspector Henderson. Okay, but where can I reach you, just in case? Well, that I'm afraid I don't know yet. See, I'm going to meet Bat. Uh, I'm going to meet a, a friend of mine now, and it all depends on what he has to tell me. So long. Where'd you get the car, Bruce? Rented it. Figured we'd get around a lot easier, and we'd have a place to talk privately. Good. Have you been up to the airport? Uh huh. What gives there? I'm not sure, Clark. What do you mean by that? Well, we may have something, and then again, we may not. Oh, come on, come on. Stop talking in riddles. Well, this much I know. Stark and the Scarlet Widow left the field in their plane about a half an hour before we got there. Oh, that was close. That makes all the difference in the world. Go on. Well, they carried a full load of gas, giving them a range of some 1,200 miles, according to the field manager. You mean 1,200 out and 12 back? No, 1,200 altogether. Oh. 600 miles would be their point of return. 
Well, that's a lot of territory. Yes, but we can narrow it down a little, I think. Oh, how? Well, reach in my pocket and you'll find a map and a sheet of tracing paper. Oh. Yeah, I have them. Where'd you get them? The map I bought at the field. It's a regional chart of the northern part of the Midwest. And the tracing paper? The field manager says the pilot of Stark's plane dropped it. Oh, pull over to the side of the road. Let's have a look at it. Okay. Now, oh. now look. There's a line going on it, see? Yes, a broken line and some numbers at various points on it. Well, I haven't been able to find out what they mean yet. 16 NE, then 120, and at the end of the line, 2332. And there's more at the bottom of the sheet. Where? Oh, yes. WVAR20N. Huh. What does all that mean? Well, the way I figure it, the pilot of Stark's plane laid out a course on this sheet of tracing paper while holding it over a map like this. Why a map like this one, particularly? Well, it's the only one outside of the smaller sectional charts that shows the field of departure. Oh, I see. Well, then if we lay the tracing paper over the map like this, we'd get... Hey, but wait. We don't know which direction the line takes. It'd go anywhere, north, south, east, or west. Well, I doubt it would go east. That would mean Stark and the Scarlet Widow were doubling back. And things are pretty hot back there for them now. Yeah, that's true. And if they went north, they'd be leaving the country, going up into Canada. You think they might do that? Well, that would indicate they're running out, which I doubt, Bruce. The pickings are much better here. Well, then that leaves a 1,200-mile arc from south to west. Yeah, it's a lot of territory, but it's our one chance. Our one hope of stopping them before they cause any more damage. You're right, Kent. The answer is in this piece of paper, Bruce. And somehow we've got to find it. Clutching the flimsy sheet of tracing paper in his hands, Kent stares at the thin, broken line and the puzzling figures beside it. What do they mean? Can this paper lead him to butcher Stark? Gang, you won't want to miss the gripping climax of today's episode, so keep listening. Of Superman. It is early evening and a plane drones steadily southwestward through a calm sky. In the cabin, a man and woman plot their next move. The man is Butcher Stark, and the woman is the Scarlet Widow. Do you understand now, Butcher? Do you know what we are to do? Yeah, yeah, Widow, I know, I know. You sound impatient, my friend. You must never be impatient. The timing of such an operation is most important. Ah! Why do we have to fool around with stuff like this? Why don't we just blast our way and take what we want? That would be too crude, and the chances of success are that much less. Not with me around, I ain't. You put a great deal of faith in your voice, my dear butcher. It's got us what we want, ain't it? Be patient, my friend, and trust me. Ah, I don't like getting killed. If I want something, I take it. Rest assured, we will take everything we want, but it must be done with the next. Just the same. Take I... my word for it. After this job, our success is assured. It better be. No one will ever question us, believe me, or even try to stop us. We will become absolute masters of every underworld operation in this country. Indulgently, the Scarlet Widow pats the arm of her henchman and smiles. A quiet smile of confidence and triumph. What is their plan? And will Superman be able to stop them before it goes into operation? Dang, you won't want to miss Monday's action-packed episode when Superman and Butcher Stark meet again. Tune in Monday, same time, same station, for Chapter 14 of The Voice of Doom on The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics Magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time. Watch for the Superman adventure serial soon to be shown at your local movie theater. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. <laughs> Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with amazing physical powers far beyond those of mortal men, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, 
wages a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Today, as Superman and his friend Batman continue their efforts again to pick up the trail of Butcher Stark and his accomplice, the Scarlet Widow, the two vicious enemies of society prepare to strike again. You understand what you ought to do, Butcher. You know the timing of the operation. Yeah, yeah, I got it. It's the cinch, Widow. Not quite, but if you follow my plans to the letter, you shouldn't have too much difficulty. <laughs> and nobody will be the wiser. They'll never find out what happened. That's the beauty of my plan. Say, <laughs> you and me, we work pretty good together, don't we? With your power and my brains, Butcher, we shall go far. Now go get some sleep. We go to work in two hours. <laughs> And now, the adventures of Superman. <laughs> Allied with the diabolically clever Scarlet Widow, one of Superman's most dangerous enemies, Butcher Stark, the escaped convict and ruthless killer, has begun a deadly campaign of crime, using the sonic power of his voice to establish their mastery over all underworld forces of the nation. However, Superman, having discovered how to fight Stark's power, has stayed on the trail of the convict, a trail that has led him to Chicago, where we find him now with his friend Batman. In their guises as Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne, they sit now in a parked car near the outskirts of the city, examining a sheet of tracing paper, their only clue to Stark's whereabouts. It's going to be tough, Bruce. Just this paper marked with numbers and letters to go on. Yeah, I know, Clark. But we know the line running down the middle of the paper must be a court, because Stark's pilot held a tracing paper over this map, mm -hmm. and using the airport as a starting point, worked out a course to an unknown destination. Yeah, that's logical. All right, now let's figure out what these numbers and letters... No, wait, no, wait. We'll work it out step by step. Stark's pilot traced his course to a certain destination. Uh -huh. Now, in order to reach that destination, what factors does he have to take into consideration? Well, you're a pilot, Bruce. You tell me. Well, assuming the weather was clear, all he'd have to worry about would be airspeed, wind direction, and wind velocity. Check. Go on. All right, take airspeed first. These numbers here could be his estimated speed. 120... A little low. Should be about 135. Well, we'll see. Let's go on to the next step. Wind velocity and direction. Yeah, it might be this set of figures. 16 NE, northeast. All right. Now then. You said 120 was low for that tight plane, which should cruise at 135. Yes. Okay. Knock off 16 miles for headwind and you're down to 120, ground speed. I get it. All right, now what about this set of figures here and these letters WVAR 20N? Well, there's another factor pilot take into consideration when plotting course. Changes in wind velocity and direction. Oh, I've got it. W for wind, VAR, variation, 20 miles north. On the nose, pal. Which leaves this last set of figures, 2332. Three, two. Well, they're marked at the end of the course, aren't they? Yes. Mm, wouldn't be distance. Stark would be way off this sectional map. Ha! <laughs> what a hot pilot you are. He has to plan his time of arrival, doesn't he? Hey, that's right. 2,300 hours and 32 minutes. Sure. Now, knowing... Knowing his speed and the wind direction and velocity, can we plot his course? Oh, we can't. But we can take the dope to the meteorology station at Central Airport and find out where these wind conditions exist. That way, we should come pretty close to his destination. Fair enough. Let's get rolling. It's 8.30 now. We only have three hours to go. Do you uh, think you can give us the information, Mr. Blaine? Yes, I think I can help you, gentlemen. Step over this way. We'll examine the master weather chart for this area. Yes, we're in, Bruce. Keep your fingers crossed, Clark. Here we are. Now, let's see. We have a low-pressure area over Chicago now with a high-pressure area below and to the west. I think we'll find what you want over in this direction. Uh-huh. How did you figure that, Bruce? Well, the highs tend to spill into lows. It's huh? one of Mother Nature's tricks to equalize pressure all over the country. Yes, here we are. The wind currents in this region are mostly north and northeast, going right up into the low. That's the direction we want, Mr. Blaine. Is there any specified airflow indicated with a velocity 16 miles northeast or 20 north? Uh, yeah, now, here we are. See this line? It indicates a continuous airflow to the northeast at a rate of exactly 16 miles per hour. Well, that's a pretty long stretch. Along here, there's a tendency toward variation. Change in the wind because of topography and local weather disturbances. It shifts to 20 miles north. That's it. That's what we're looking for. Yes. Exactly where is that, Mr. Blaine? Right in here on the map. Stretch of about 100 miles. Uh, pretty desolate country, isn't it? Mostly mountain area. Very few towns, villages. Uh -huh. Okay, Mr. Blaine. Thanks very much. You're quite welcome. Let's go, Clark. Let's get back to our car and plot the course on the map. Right. Come on. Well, that's that. 
Now, how much time have we? Well, it's quarter past ten. We have an hour and fifteen minutes to get there. You make it with over an hour to spare. Uh, there are no airfields down there. Wonder where they plan to sit down. That's what we've got to find out. So off with these clothes, and we'll let Superman take over. There we are. All right. You all set? Check. Okay, then. Up, up, and away! <laughs> Meanwhile, far to the southwest, a cabin monoplane drills through the night sky, roaring toward a deadly rendezvous. As in the cabin, aft, Butcher Stark and the Scarlet Widow make strange preparations. You're sure the harness is tight enough, Butcher? Yeah. But what about that rope? It ain't gonna break, is it? Of course not. And if it does, you have your parachute. Yeah. But listen, why do I have to jump after the job is over? Why can't I stick with you? There are two very good reasons. First of all, I'm not strong enough to pull you back into the plane. And second, I want you on the ground with the others to make sure they do as they're told. Ah, I don't see why we had to drag them into the deal. Don't be stupid. Do you think you can transfer that cargo by yourself? Uh, no, but we'll have to split with them, won't we? With When their usefulness comes to an end, Butcher, then you may exercise the power of your voice again. Oh, oh, yeah. And we need not worry about splitting with them. <laughs> hey, I never thought about that angle. That is precisely why I am necessary to you. Okay. When do we go to work? Our rendezvous is timed for 32 minutes past 11. At 35 minutes past 11, we should be finished. Then our leadership will be unquestioned. <laughs> Scarlet Widow seems confident, arrogantly confident, as she and Butcher Stark prepare for their coming operation. What do they plan to do? In just a moment, gang, we'll bring you the amazing climax of today's episode. So keep listening. And now... Back to the adventures of Superman. The time now is 11.30, two minutes before Butcher Stark's mysterious rendezvous. And we find Superman standing with his friend Batman on a high plateau, peering through the darkness into the valley below, searching for Stark. Not a sign of them, Superman. They aren't anywhere in this valley. Oh, hang it all, Batman. We've covered at least 100 square miles inch by inch. They must be somewhere near here. If our figuring was right. Oh, now, don't tell me we made a mistake. Oh, I don't see how, but... What time is it? 11.31. Uh, it's one minute to go. We may be miles from the right spot. Wait a minute. Huh? Quiet. You hear something? Yes. A plane. Oh, yeah, I hear it now. Sounds like a heavy job, though. Uh-huh. There it is. See the wing lights? Not too well. It's big. Four engines. Oh, yeah, transport. Well, that's not start ship. No, but... Batman! What now? There's another plane up there. About 300 feet over the transport. You think it's Stark? Maybe. Anyway, it's worth investigating. I think I... Batman, it is Stark. Well, how do you know? The sonic power in his voice carries. We've found him, Batman. We've found him. Superman! Look! What the... The transport! Look at it! It's falling apart! Great Scott! It's in a spin! It's gonna crash! Do something, Superman! For heaven's sake, do something! Now! Like the wailing moan of a banshee, the whine of the helpless falling transport fills the sky, and the man of steel pauses uncertainly. This is his one chance to get Butcher Stark. To hesitate too long will mean to lose him again, perhaps forever. But does he dare make contact with Stark's terrible sonic power? Suddenly, he reaches a decision. Up, up, and away! <laughs> Whatever you do, gang, don't fail to hear the next action-packed episode in which Superman goes into action against Butcher Stark. Be sure to tune in tomorrow, same time, same station, for Chapter 15 of The Voice of Doom on The Adventures of Superman. <laughs> Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics Magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time. Watch for the Superman Adventure Serial, soon to be shown at your local movie theater. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. 
able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with amazing physical powers far beyond those of mortal men, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, wages a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Today, Butcher Stark and the Scarlet Widow strike again, and although Superman is on the scene, he finds himself unable to prevent their escape. Superman, they've knocked out that transport. Stark wrecked it with his voice. Yes, and he's up there in that other plane. I'm going after him. But the transport is falling out of control. What? Look at it. It's in a spin. It'll crash. Great, Scott. Wait here. Up, up, and away! <laughs> And now, the adventures of Superman. Up! Faster! Faster! Like a blazing comet, Superman rockets up into the night sky as he charges toward a crippled transport, a four-engine plane that is spinning helplessly earthward from the effects of Butcher Stark's deadly sonic voice. Arrowing straight toward the plane, the man of steel darts under one wildly flailing wing. He's coming up underneath, clutches the metal skin with his powerful fingers. There. Now we straighten out and fly right. Thrusting upward, Superman fights the tremendous force of gravity, pushing the nose of the plane up until it is on an even keel again. But the engines still sputter and labor. He realizes that he will have to bring the aircraft to Earth himself. Tight circles, he spirals earthward again, supporting the transport on his mighty shoulders. And in a few seconds, he places it on the broad plateau where Batman is waiting anxiously. There we are. Now, duck inside, Batman. See what you can do about the crew. Right. Hurry. Maybe I can still catch Stark's plane. Hey, look at this door. Blast it clear off its hinges. Oh, never mind the observation. Step on it. I'm going after Stark. Superman, wait. I can't wait if I Superman do. Superman needs help badly. Look. Come up here quickly. <laughs> Poor fellows are in bad shape, Batman. Yes, they must have caught the full power of Stark's voice. Uh -huh. Look at this flight cabin. It's a mess. Yeah. Now let's see if we can revive them. Uh, loosen the clothes. Right. I, I don't get it. Is this why Stark and the Scarlet Widow came down here? To knock out this transport? Uh-huh. Let's take a look in the cargo section. What are those things? Bales of cloth? Cloth? Nothing. Those are valuable furs. At least 50 skins to each bale. Fur, sure. This cargo must be worth at least $250,000. Wow. No wonder. But if this is what they want, how did they figure to get the furs out of here? Well, they're obviously coming back for them, which may give us the chance we want to get them. I see. Say, hey, hey, these fellows aren't coming around at all, Superman, no. do you think? They need medical attention. Well? I'll have to get them to a doctor. As a matter of fact, I might as well take the whole plane out of here. Why? Well, just in case Stark and the Scarlet Widow get here. This way, we'll be sure they won't get the furs. Leave these boys strapped in their seats, then they won't be bounced around. Okay. Now, uh... Wait a minute. What's up? Hold it. You hear that? Yeah. Yeah, a car. A truck, more likely. What's a truck doing up here? Someone coming to unload those furs, probably. Hey, that's right. Maybe... Yes, that's... there it is. Coming across the field toward us. How many on it? Uh, four. Well, I guess that means a battle, huh? No doubt. Okay, let them come. <laughs> Quiet now. Give them a surprise. Check. Okay, you guys. Come on, step on it. They're heading for the rear cargo hatch. Well, they obviously know what they're after. When do we move? Let's 
give them a chance to commit themselves first. Well, uh, this crate sure did a fine job of shutting it down. You better go up front, Musty, and uh, check the crew. Right. Uh oh, here comes our first customer. Would you like service? With pleasure. Okay, here he comes. Stand Ready by. and waiting. Hey, hey Batman! Uh, Catch him! Got him! Hey, Rusty, what's up? Don't move, Batman. Hey, Rusty! Come on, pal. Investigate. You guys get those furs out of there. I'm going forward. Customer coming up. After you, Alphonse. Thank you, Gaston. Here he comes. Hey, Rusty, what's the idea, pal? Oh, oh. Turn the catch. Got him? Good. Well, two down, two to go. And those two are wise. Look, they pulled their guns. Oh, well, I'm tired of hanging around. Stay here. I'll get them. <laughs> Put down those pea shooters, boys. I don't feel like playing. Holy smoke. It's Superman. Come on, let's get out of here. Oh, no, don't go, boys. We want to talk with no, you. No, leave me alone. I can't leave me alone. Oh, I, you, I don't like Dude, guns. They make me back. itch. Here, give them to me. No, no. Now, we'll just make them harmless. There. Look, Batman. A couple of pretzels. Hey, neat trick. Now it's my turn. Come closer, pals, and take your medicine. Oh, stay away from me. Stay away from me. Well, that takes care of that, Superman. Yeah. Now I'd better see that the crew gets medical attention. Well, what about the four sleeping beauties who just arrived? Oh, I'll take them, too. I'll turn them over to the authorities. You want me to come with you? No, no. You get rid of that truck in case Stark or the Scarlet Widow show up. Good idea. And if they do, don't stick your neck out. Don't tangle with them. Just watch and listen. Right. I'll be back as fast as I can. Oh, hey, by the way, where are you going? To the closest city of any size. Stand by now so I can get a good grip on this plane. There we are. Good luck. Okay, see you later. Up, up, and away! Hey! Hey, what's going on here? Where'd the ship come from? Sorry, I suppose I should have stopped for clearance, but as you can see, this flight is slightly out of the ordinary. What? Why, it... You... You're Superman! Right, and I'm afraid I haven't time to explain things, but in the cabin of this plane, you'll find six men. The two strapped in their seats in the flight cabin are the pilots and must be rushed to the hospital immediately. Yeah, The but other I... four are to be sent to jail and guard the cargo. It's pretty valuable. But wait a minute. I, I don't get this. Don't what? try. Please, just do as I ask. Now, back to where I left Batman. Up! Up! And away! Batman. Batman. Oh. Peculiar. Batman, where are you? Answer me. Wait, Scott, where can he be? Batman? Batman! His keen eyes stabbing through the darkness. Superman searches for his friend. But the field around him is empty and still. And there is no answer to his frantic call. What has happened to Batman? Has he fallen victim to Butcher Stark's deadly power? We'll know more in just a moment, gang. So keep listening. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. As the Man of Steel frantically searches the high plateau for his friend Batman, fearing he has become another of Butcher Stark's victims, a heavy truck rumbles along a narrow mountain road some 20 miles away. In the cab, Butcher Stark sits alone behind the wheel, bewildered scowl on his coarse features. He is perplexed and angry at the failure of his plan. He guides the heavy vehicle carelessly down the darkened road. An interested yet worried observer, Batman, crouches in the van, immediately behind the cab, where he clings to the side support as the truck careens from side to side. That fool will kill us both if he keeps on driving this way. He'll skid right off the road. Blast it. There was only some way I could stop him. But Superman told me not to stick my neck out. Well, I'm in deep enough now, so I may as well make the most of it. Oh, if I could just reach through this window here and clout Stark over the head with his jack handle. Oh. Lord, I dropped it. Good Lord, he's stopping. Who's back there? Uh-oh, this is it. Whoever's in there, come out. Not on your life, pal. Come out or I'll come in and get you. Oh, oh, that voice. Did you hear me? Come out. Or you'll be sorry you was ever born. A 
as the ruthless killer advances toward the tailboard of the truck. Batman can hardly hear him because of the pain caused by Stark's voice stabbing through his head. In another moment, he will be found. And Stark will probably not hesitate to use all of his power in one fatal blast. Can nothing be done to save Batman now? We'll find out in tomorrow's gripping episode, gang. So be sure to listen. Don't fail to tune in tomorrow. Same time, same station for Chapter 16 of The Voice of Doom on The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics Magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time. Watch for the Superman Adventure Serial soon to be shown at your local movie theater. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. It's Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with amazing physical powers far beyond those of mortal men, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, wages a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Today, as Batman follows Butcher Stark to a secret destination and finds himself in danger of discovery... Superman, unable to find him, races to the headquarters of the state police for assistance. You've got to help me, Captain Dawson. I know Batman is in danger, but I don't know where he is. And I've got to find him before he tangles with Butcher Stark. I'll do whatever you think is best, Superman. Just tell me what. Block off the entire area for at least 50 miles. Make sure that not so much as a worm can get through. I'll take care of the rest. Consider it done, Superman. But if you ask me, I'm afraid we're too late. If Batman has met with Butcher Stark... He must be dead by now. And now, the adventures of Superman. Forced to abandon his pursuit of Butcher Stark and the Scarlet Widow in order to save the lives of the two pilots in the fur-laden plane Stark wrecked with the deadly sonic power of his voice, Superman left his friend, Batman, on the scene to watch for the killer's possible reappearance. Then he sped to the nearest city with the plane and its unconscious crew. But when he returned, Batman was gone. As the Man of Steel continued his frantic search for his friend, Batman was hiding in the rear of a large truck driven by Butcher Stark himself as it roared through the night to a secret destination. Planning to knock out the escaped convict with a heavy jack handle he had found in the truck, Batman is suddenly thrown off balance when they hit a bump in the road. The handle drops to the floor, and Stark's reaction is immediate. Stopping the truck, he leaps out of the cab and runs around to the rear loading doors. Who's in there? Who's in there? His heart hammering, Batman crouches in the darkness near the doors, realizing he has only one chance of survival. Oh, I've got to move fast. When he opens those doors, I've got to jump him and knock him out before he can blast me with his voice. If I miss, it's curtains. For a moment, there is silence, and Batman scarcely breathes as he waits for Stark's next move. Then a sudden sharp pain knights through his head as the killer roars his anger. Whoever you are, come out of there! Oh, come out of there or I'll come in and get you! Then, suddenly, over the deadly piercing tone of Stark's voice, Batman is conscious of another sound, an approaching car. And Stark is silent again. Have any trouble there, mister? Uh, no, no trouble. Uh, are you sure? There ain't no trouble, I tell you. All right. Uh, do you mind pulling over a little so I can get past you? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. With a sigh of relief, Batman inches closer to the loading door and grasps the jack handle as Stark clambers behind the wheel and starts the truck. Batman waits while Stark pulls up a few yards, waits until the car behind turns wide and passes into the night. Then, with the speed and agility of an acrobat, he ducks out and scrambles to the top of the truck. Lying flat, he holds his breath again as Stark comes to a quick stop and runs back to the loading doors. Flashing a light into the truck, the killer finds it empty. And confident now that the noise he'd heard was caused by something loose, 
He trudges back to resume his trip as Batman secures a firm handhold on the roof of the truck, prepared to stay on the trail no matter what the cost. <laughs> Meanwhile, at State Police Headquarters in Lincoln, the capital city of Nebraska, Superman, frantic with worry, asks for help. I've looked and looked, Captain. I've been over that whole area a dozen times, but I haven't found him. I need your help. Of course, Superman. We'll do what we can. But frankly, if you've searched that area already, I don't know how we can be any more successful. Well, if you can block off the whole region, throw a dragnet around an area of, say, 50 miles, I think we'll have him. I see. Look, have you, uh, you thought of the possibility that Batman may be dead? Yes. Yes, but if he were, I'd have found him. There'd be no reason for Stark to take his body with him. Batman is either a prisoner, Captain, or he's following Stark and simply can't get in touch with me. Very well. I'll black off that entire area and alert my road patrol. Thank you very much, Captain. I appreciate it more than I can say. You, of course, can go out with any one of the squad. Well, thanks, but I can do more if I operate from the air. I'll keep in touch with you through your men. Anything you say. Talk to you later, Captain. So long. Good luck to you, Superman. Thanks. Up! Up! And away! <laughs> Captain Dawson speaking. Captain, this is Miller at the switchboard. Yeah? The telephone company operator has just passed a funny call to me. I don't exactly know how to handle it. All right, I'll take it. Right, sir. Go ahead, sir. Hello, this is Captain Dawson of the state police. Can I help you? Listen, Captain, this is Batman. Batman? You've got to find Superman for me. Give him a message. Great Scott, he was here just a minute ago. He's looking for you. Get a hold of him. Tell him I followed Butcher Stark to a small farmhouse where he's meeting the Scarlet Widow. Where is the farmhouse? I don't know. Somewhere east of the place where Superman left me. Traveled about an hour by truck, driving fairly fast. All right, we'll figure it out. Where can we meet you? Near the farm? Near it. Captain, I'm in it. Stark and Scarlet Widow are in the next room. Holy smokes! So don't waste any time. Contact Superman at once. Goodbye. You fool! You miserable, stupid fool! Now, wait a minute, Widow. You can't talk to me like that. What happened to those furs? I told you, I don't know. That's no answer. All I found was the truck. No furs, no plane. Nobody around. Look here, you aren't by any chance trying to double-cross me, are you? Huh? You didn't perhaps make a deal with the men. If I had, would I have come here to meet you? Would I have brought the truck back? Well, there can be only one answer, then. Yeah, like what? The doctor was right. The power of your voice is failing. What? Failing? My voice? You didn't know I had you tested, did you, Butcher? Tested? How? When? That man I had you meet before we took off last night, the one who listened to you so carefully, he was a friend of mine. A doctor without a license to practice. And he said I'm through? Not quite, but your power is waning. That's a lie. It must be true or this wouldn't have happened. Your voice obviously had no effect on the plane. It never did crash. And now you're trying to cover up. So what is this? The kiss-off? You might call it that, Butcher. I've been very displeased with your attitude lately. You've become more and more uncooperative. So that's it, huh? You pull a couple of jobs and you figure you're back on your feet now so you don't need me no more, huh? Your vocal power was your only asset, Butcher, and now that it's gone... Gone, huh? Well, I got news for you, lady. Stay where you are, Butcher! Put down that pop gun, you ain't gonna use it! Butcher! Does this sound like I'm through, Widow? Butcher, stop! Please, stop! Made a mistake, didn't you? Please, I can't stand it! Too bad! Because you're gonna get a lot more! on his heel, Butcher Stark rushes out of the farm, but his voice still echoes throughout the building, echoes in the next room, where unseen, Batman lies sprawled on the floor, also a victim of Stark's deadly power, and in the living room at the Scarlet Widow's feet, a large kerosene lamp lies shattered, the flame beginning to eat its way across the rug. In just a moment, gang, we'll bring you the gripping climax of today's episode, so keep listening. To the adventures of Superman. Racing through the night sky, Superman searches for his friend Batman, while the Nebraska State Police in turn search for him with the news that Batman had traced Butcher Stark to a rendezvous with the Scarlet Widow. Finally, when the Man of Steel sees a patrol car and swoops down to confer with the troopers, he receives the news from Captain Dawson in person. 
You know where the farm is, Captain? Yes, we figured it out. It's the old Handley place about ten miles down this road. Right. You and your men sit tight. I'll get you and your car there in a hurry. What's that? I said just sit tight. Up! Up! And away! <laughs> Here we are. Good heavens, the house is on fire. Yes, you sure this is the place? Positive, but... Great Scott, where's Batman? You said he was here. He is. Where? Inside the house. I'm afraid he's done for. Stunned by the captain's announcement, Superman stands transfixed, staring at the blazing structure. Now, before he can move, the flaming roof begins to sag. The walls billow outward. The entire building is on the verge of collapse. Anyone inside is doomed. Gang, there's plenty of action in tomorrow's suspense-packed episode, so don't fail to listen. Be sure to tune in, same time, same station, for Chapter 17 of The Voice of Doom on The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics Magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time. Watch for the Superman Adventure Serial, soon to be shown at your local movie theater. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. <laughs> Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with amazing physical powers far beyond those of mortal men, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, wages a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Today, after a frantic night-long search, Superman finally locates Batman in a lonely farmhouse but arrives to find the wooden structure in flames. Captain Dawson, are you sure he's in there? That's where he said he'd wait in the house. All right, then. Have your men stand by with first aid equipment. What are you going to do? What do you think? Go in after him, of course. No, Superman, you can't. Look, the whole place is caving in. It's too late. And now, the adventures of Superman. Following the ruthless killer Butcher Stark to a secret rendezvous with the Scarlet Widow at a lonely farmhouse, Batman managed to phone the police and tell them where he was. And they, in turn, passed the information on to Superman, who had been searching frantically for his friend. Then, with Captain Dawson of the State Police, the Man of Steel sped to the scene, only to find the farmhouse a blazing inferno and his friend trapped inside. Without a second's hesitation, he jumped forward to Batman's rescue. And at that very instant, the flame-weakened roof sagged, the walls closed out, and as the Man of Steel disappeared into the flames, the entire blazing structure collapsed. Dr. Dawson, he's in there! Right in the middle of it, I saw him! I know, the whole place has caved in on top of him. I don't see how even Superman can survive that. Can we do anything, sir? Without fire fighting equipment, we can't get within ten feet of the place. Horrible! Horrible! Great Scott! I, I can't believe it! It's impossible! What are you talking about? Look, it's Superman! Walking out of the fire, carrying someone! He, he's all right, sir! He made it! How do you feel now, Batman? <laughs> all right, I guess. You'd better lie still. My men are fixing up a stretcher. We'll get you to a hospital. <laughs> Hospital, nothing. I'm all right, I tell you. Take it easy, pal. How in the world did you do it, Superman? Oh, I found Batman on the floor just as the roof started to cave in. I managed to shield him, and that was all there was to it. You mean the house caved in right on top of you? Yes, but I've got a pretty thick hide, Captain. Listen, what about Stark? Did you get him? No, we were too late. Can you tell us what happened, Batman? Sure. He and the Scarlet Widow had a scrap. Stark lost his temper and gave her the full benefit of his voice. And he broke a lighted kerosene lamp, and that's what started the fire. Oh, sure. And you were listening, so you were knocked out by his voice, too, eh? Yeah. But I saw it coming, uh -huh. so I covered my head with my cloak, blotted out as much of the sound as I could, and then too, his back was to me, so I didn't get the full blast. Good. But the widow... He's dead, Batman. I saw her lying in there, but it was too late to do anything for her. 
Well, where do we go from here? Now, we've only won half the battle. And the more important half is still to come. Getting Stark, you mean. Right. How about it, Captain Dawson? Can we get to work right away? Of course. We'll go back to Lincoln and start the biggest manhunt this state has ever seen. Good. Let's go. Attention, all county police. Be on the lookout for Butcher Stark, escaped convict. Wanted for murder. Description as follows. Attention, all state police. Request your cooperation in search for Butcher Stark, escaped convict. Wanted for murder. Description as follows. State lines are all being guarded, Superman. Every road is blocked. Fine, Captain. What about the neighboring state? They were closed an hour ago. Beetle couldn't well, get through without being yeah. seen. Good. That's right. And it looks uh-huh. as if all we have to do is wait. Oh, that's all wait. we can do. But suppose he does break through. He didn't properly, you know. We'll still have a line on him, Batman. We can alert bordering states in five minutes. He'd be on the job immediately. Good enough. I hope you warned everyone about the power of his voice, Captain. I did, but I've had a lot of questions about it. Frankly, they think I'm crazy. Well, they wouldn't think so if they could hear it. In any case, they're on the alert for anything out of the ordinary. Slightest indication of trouble, and they'll shoot to kill. Well, can't do any more, I suppose. Nope. Now keep your fingers crossed. Captain Dawson! Captain Dawson! Yes? Report from County Sheriff, District 3. Let's have it. Yes, sir. Is it about Stark? Yes, listen. Truck in question found abandoned near outskirts of Brenton. Thorough check reveals man of Butcher Stark's description bought ticket at Brenton Railroad Depot bound for Omaha. Omaha? He's heading east. Now we can start pinning him down. Walters. Yes, sir? Alert the Omaha police. Tell them to check every local that's come through from Brenton and report back to me as fast as possible. Report from Omaha, Captain Dawson. Right, thanks. Any news of Stark? Uh, investigation at Omaha Railroad Terminal reveals the man of Butcher Stark's description... Boarded Midwest Streamliner bound for Chicago. Chicago? What time does it get there? I've already checked, sir. It arrives at 10.15. 10.15? Well, it's 9.45 now. We can make it all right. Captain, will you notify the commissioner of police in Chicago? Tell him to meet that train. Of course. And tell him that Batman and I will be there, too. Let's go, Batman. Right. Thanks a lot, Captain Dawson. Yes, thanks, Captain. And so long. Come on, through this window, Batman. Up! Up! And away! Almost all the passengers are off, Superman. I know, Batman. Stark wasn't on the train. You sure you haven't missed him? Positive, Lieutenant. Are your men covering the track side of the train? Yes, and they've got every exit in this terminal block. Well, here comes the head conductor. Maybe he can tell us something. Well, I'll ask him. Conductor? Yes, officer? You're the conductor of this train? That's right. You remember a man getting aboard the train in Omaha, heavy set, about six feet tall, uh, coarse features? Why, yeah. Uh... And he probably spoke in a whisper. Oh, yes, yes, I remember. He was taking it to Chicago. Well? Did he get off here? No, no, he got off the last stop, Aurora. Said he uh, wasn't feeling well. Oh, Aurora, no. eh? Can you have the local authorities check in there, Lieutenant? Certainly. Let's get back to headquarters. <laughs> Lieutenant Byron speaking. Yeah? Yeah. You sure? Okay, thanks. Lieutenant, was that... Yes, Batman, that was a report from Aurora. Well? Bad news, Superman. What is it? No trace of Star can be found there. But, Lieutenant, he must have gone somewhere. I know, I know, but there's no trace of him in or out of Aurora. And it's been five hours since we last heard of him. Well, I'm doing everything I can. Send inquiries all over the state. Excuse me. Byron, speak. What's that? Good news, I hope. He did, eh? Well, thanks. Goodbye. Well? Good news this time. What is it? Stark chartered a plane at the Hammond Airport. A plane? For where? He's heading east to Metropolis. That's all we want to know. Come on, Batman. Let's go. <laughs> got a five-hour lead on this, Superman. You think we can catch up to him? There can be no question about it, Batman. We've simply got to do it. Faster! As Batman hangs on, the Man of Steel literally scorches the air in his desperate flight to Metropolis. Will they at last catch up with Butcher Stark? We'll know in a moment, gang, so keep listening. Thank you.
And now, back to the adventures of Superman. Speaking eastward from Chicago to Metropolis with lightning speed, Superman and Batman cling tenaciously to the trail of Butcher Stark, the ruthless killer whose voice contains deadly sonic power. We join them now in Central Police Headquarters, as in their disguises of Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne, they question Inspector Henderson. Did you get the message from Lieutenant Byron, Inspector? Yes, yes, I got it. And you covered all airports, I hope. I certainly did. Well, what happened? That plane never landed. What? What do you mean it never landed? That's what I said, Kent. I just got a report from the Galesburg police. Well? The plane Stark chartered cracked up in the mountain. Oh, no. How did it happen? Well, they don't know. It seems that the pilot was dead before the plane hit. A dirty run. Stark, what about him? No sign of him. He must have bailed out. Yeah, I guess so. But why over Galesburg? Uh, I don't... Of course. Huh? What is it, Bruce? The Sonic Laboratory is in the mountains near Galesburg. Well, that's right, but what that And got... now I remember. The Scarlet Widow claimed he was losing his power. What? So he said he was going to do something about it. Wait, Scott, you mean... You mean he thinks that by going back to the Sonic Lab, he can renew his power? An insane man can think anything, Clark. Then we've got him. Come on, Bruce. We're on our way to a showdown. <laughs> Leaving Inspector Henderson open mouthed in bewilderment, Kent and Bruce Wayne stride quickly and purposefully out of the office. In a short while, Superman will again taste the deadly power of Butcher Stark's voice. What will be the result this time? We'll know tomorrow, gang, so don't fail to listen. Tune in, same time, same station, for the last gripping episode of The Voice of Doom on The Adventures of Superman. <laughs> Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics Magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time. Watch for the Superman Adventure Serial, soon to be shown at your local movie theater. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with amazing physical powers far beyond those of mortal men, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, wages a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Today, Superman races with his friend Batman to the isolated Sonic Laboratory in the mountains for a fateful meeting and final showdown with Butcher Stark, the ruthless killer with the voice of doom. Well, there it is, Batman. There's the Sonic Laboratory. Stark, Superman. The lab is closed. That's good. I don't want any interference. Do you see Butcher Stark? No, not yet. But when he gets here, I'll give him a royal welcome. Hang on. We're going down. <laughs> Adventures of Superman! The night air over the isolated sonic laboratory in the mountains is heavy with the threat of violence and death. Jagged streaks of lightning flash warnings as the booming roll of thunder underscores the promise of disaster. Two men wait in the darkness by the laboratory. Two men easily recognizable as Superman and Batman, friends and partners in a never-ending battle against crime and injustice. Tonight, they prepare for one of the greatest battles of their careers. A battle to end the menace of Butcher Stark, the escaped convict and ruthless killer whose voice contains the fearful power of high-frequency sound. The lightning and thunder flare and roar above them and the rain begins to pour down in blinding sheets. After a moment of silence, Batman stirs nervously. What time is it now, Superman? Two minutes later than the last time you asked, Batman. Almost midnight then, huh? Uh-huh. And we've been here for almost three hours. I know, I know. Maybe we've made a mistake. Maybe Stark isn't coming here. The plane he chartered crashed near Galesburg, didn't it? Yes, but and it wasn't an accident. He killed the pilot and then bailed out. Which means he must have had a reason to land so close to the land. Yes, I know, but look... He'll show up, Batman. Don't worry. Don't worry. 
Wow, sure is coming down. What a night. Same kind of a night that created Butcher Stark's power. Remember? Uh-huh. That's a cheerful omen. Now, oh, Betty... Wait, Batman. What's up? Thought I saw something move at the edge of the clearing there. I, I can't see anything. This rain is like a solid wall. There. You see it then when the lightning flashed? Yes, something moved. It's Butcher Stark. Great guns, are you sure? Of course. I'd know him anywhere. Holy smokes, look. He's walking out into the clearing. Coming this way. Good. But well, what do we do now? Wait and jump him when he gets close enough? No, you stand back. I'm going to have it out with him alone. No holds barred. Now, wait, Superman. Be reasonable. Stand back now and cover your ears. This will probably be plenty rough. Can't you do it another way? There is no other way. Here goes. Okay, good luck, pal. All the luck in the world. As Batman's words echo like a prayer in his ears, Superman strides purposefully into the rain, walking slowly and deliberately straight toward the advancing killer, Butcher Stark. The thunder rolls menacingly overhead, and the lightning flickers in endless chains, throwing a garish blue-white light over the clearing as the two men slowly close the gap between them, making their climactic meeting a matter of seconds. Suddenly, the Man of Steel comes to a halt, and standing with his fists to his hips and his feet widespread, calls out a challenge. All right, Stark. That's as far as you go. Uh, Superman! That's right, Butcher. It's Superman. Where are you? Right here. Get a load of this! <laughs> I'm still waiting for you, Butcher. Okay, wise guy. Moving around won't help you. This time I'll finish you for good. <laughs> Go on, try it. So the deadly battle begins. Stark roaring his anger, sending wave after wave of high-frequency sound against the man of steel, who dances back and forth with the speed of light, outdistancing or eluding each powerful blast of sonic power. Come on, Butcher. What are you waiting for? Finish me off if you can. <laughs> Raging now, stumbling around the clearing like an insane man, Stark tries to blast the man of steel, but Superman is too quick. Back and forth he dies. In and out. Killer in the face, literally playing with him. Then finally, Superman calls a halt to the game and stands squarely in front of Stark, taking a desperate chance. All right, Stark, here I am. Now, go on, yell. Give me all you've got. And let's see who wins. Okay, sucker. You ask for it. Now, take this and drop it. Freaking his fury, Stark sends wave okay. after wave of blast and destructive okay. power at the man of steel. But after wavering momentarily, Superman still stands firm as a rock. Okay, Butcher. Now, I'm coming after you. No! Now stay where you are! Here I come! Don't come any closer! As the killer redoubles his efforts, Superman speaks right into the stomach barrier. Stark is panic-stricken. Then, with one final shout of fear, no! he turns no, and starts to run. It's away, too late, Stark. Don't get away, Stark. No use running. Stay away. You'll never get away. But then as he starts forward in pursuit, he is stopped by a sudden blinding flash of lightning, a blazing arrow from the heavens that strikes at the center of the clearing. And when he finally recovers from the initial shock and starts after the killer again, Superman no longer feels the deadly effect of Butcher Stark's sonic power. And the killer himself is crumpled in a whimpering heap. The act of nature that gave him his deadly power has now taken it from him. How do you feel, Superman? All right, I guess. No harm done. I can hardly believe it's all over. It was one of the most fantastic things I've ever seen. Yes, and it's strange to think that the lightning which created his power should take it from him. Frankly, I can't think of greater poetic justice. Well, it's all over now. And speaking of justice, let's take him back to Metropolis and turn him over to the police so we can get what he deserves. What are you going to tell Perry White? What can I tell him? Except that a murderer has been caught and will now pay the full penalty of the law. And so another amazing adventure of the man from Krypton comes to an end. 
But in just a moment, you'll find out about a surprise that is waiting for Superman. A new and baffling mystery adventure that you won't want to miss. So keep listening. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. Several days have gone by since Superman's adventure with Butcher Stark's Voice of Doom. Now, in his guise and garb of the mild-mannered reporter Clark Kent, he is seated in his office at the Daily Planet when his door opens and copy boy Beanie Martin comes in. Hello, Beanie. Come in. You want to see me, Mr. Kent? Yes, I thought you might be able to tell me where Jim Olsen is. He was, I don't know, except, well, he went dashing out of here a few minutes ago like as if his coat tails was a fire. That's so? Uh-huh. And they looked kind of pale-like and excited. Why? What happened? Search me, except maybe... Maybe what? Well, maybe it was on account of the visitor he had. Who was that? A peculiar-looking character with a long, curly beard and a towel wrapped around his head and, and earrings hanging from his ears. Oh, your description makes him sound like a Hindu. Well, whoever or whatever he was, he sure upset Jim. Why do you keep saying Jim was upset, Beanie? Because of what he said to me before he left. Tell me about it. Well, when I saw how he looked, glassy-eyed sort of, I asked him what's cooking. Yes? And all he said was, you wouldn't believe it if I told you. What? Yeah, and then he said, I can hardly believe it myself, but I saw it with my own eyes and heard it with my own ears. And even if there's nothing to it, I just gotta follow it through and make sure. How do you like that for double talk, huh? Doesn't make sense. I sure don't. I don't like the sound of it, Beanie. I don't like it at all. If Clark Kent knew what was behind Jimmy Olsen's strange actions, he would like it even less. Because there is real cause for alarm. Yes, gang, there's real mystery and suspense in the new Superman adventure that begins on Monday. So don't miss it. For real thrills and chills, be sure to tune in again Monday, same time, same station, for chapter one of the exciting story called The Secret of the Genie on The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics Magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time. Watch for the Superman adventure serial soon to be shown at your local movie theater.